What's going on, Spit and Chicklets fans? Biz here, and we are going to be in Detroit, Michigan, August 6th and 7th at Greek Town Casino. We're going to set up the ball hockey courts. We're going to be playing some roller hockey. And even if you didn't get accepted to play in the tournament, you can still show up and party with us. We're even going to have a little uh, post game party at where with? Old Shillelagh's in Detroit. It'll be a time and a half. Come for the hockey, stay for the Pink Whitney. Let's go. Hello. Everybody, welcome to episode 344 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney for my friends at New Amsterdam Vodka here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. What is up, gang? The protection lists are in. We've got a buyout shocker and mini. Philly grabs a high end D man. We got a huge double interview later for you, two guys at once. And I am back on US soil. But let's say hola to the boys first producer, Mikey Grinnelly in Manhattan. What's up, guy? What's going on, boys? Lots of hockey talk for today. And Ari, I cannot wait to hear some of these Colombian stories. So let's get oh, into it. Oh, absolutely. Let's do this. Let's say hi to the boys first. Oh, Biz Nasty, Paul Bissonette. What's up, buddy? Uh, pretty, pretty busy week. Going back to last episode, uh, potential fight with Jake Paul. I know uh, oh. uh, Dave Portnoy was kicking up some dust. I would love to cave that guy's face in. Um, he said that he wouldn't. Uh, he, what was his quote? I think that he basically said that he would knock me out because he only wants to fight experienced fighters. Now, mind you, he's fighting guys who are about a foot shorter than him, who are out of shape. Now, he's moving on to Tyrone Woodley, who's an uh, ex-UFC champion. Now, this guy's obviously a little bit more legitimate than that Ben Askren guy, but I tell you what, man, we got the whole barstool spit and chicklets machine behind this. I would fucking, I would definitely knock that guy out in a five-round five bout. I think that's how, how many rounds they go, right? Five? I, think so. I don't even know if they go three or five. Yeah. He, 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 the, the, the line where he said, like, I, I, you have to give me someone experienced was so, did he, was he, did he know what he was saying? Like he's done the know. exact opposite of that. I don't know. But you think a guy worth that much money would, uh, would invest in some exfoliant or, and, or face wash, because I don't know, I'd be afraid to fight him. His whole fucking head might explode. Cause it looked like a big giant, giant zit. Now moving <laughs> away from that, uh, busy weekend, we might be adding another member to the family. We, uh, we, we're going to adopt another dog. So I think this oh, week we're going like, to have to go back. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Am I getting squeezed? Right, like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Am I <laughs> salary changing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we, we went and uh, looked at, at a dog and I think we're going to adopt another one. So we're going to get Finn a brother. Now I'm going to need some help from all you spit, spit and chicklets fans. As far as picking a name, we have uh, a list of um, Albert Maverick Lloyd. Let me check out the other ones here too. I got a few more. I'm a big fan of people names for dogs, like traditional people names. Like, what up, Fred? Yeah, we got uh, Walter, potentially Walter. You look like a Walter right right now, uh, R.A. Uh, Archie, (laughs) Rusty, Trip, Moose, Buck. And I don't know if I've said Ralphie yet, but those are the those are the main (laughs) contenders right now. If you guys have any names that you want to submit that I can take a look at. What kind of dog, Biz? It is a wired hair something i don't I, i'm not a oh god i don't oh, know all these fuck. No, 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 no. K- katie's shit. katie's what was he, do- a coyote for you found in the <laughs> desert are they in the desert K- katie's the dog person it's like a wire hair uh something with a lab mix okay it's a it's a bit of a mutt but uh, he's a cutie and we're thinking about adding him to the family aside from that ra another news story popped up and i know that you're behind this one okay oh, shark boy. shark advocates call for rebranding of violent attacks as interactions. So this has to be you behind this, RA, given the fact that you're barking about them announcing these shark attacks on the news. So uh, keep a lookout for that. So no longer are they going to be called shark attacks or announced them. They're more of interactions. I'm doing no, PF. In La La Land, where those people live, they'll be called shark interactions. But the guy who gets his arm bitten off by a fucking hammerhead, do they even bite? A uh, bull oh, shark, yeah. a bull, bull hammerheads. Bull, bulls hammer- are the meanest out there. Bulls no, are the but worst. I said hammerhead first. Do they bite? Okay. Bulls, are, hammerheads are bad too. Bull sharks are generally known as the worst of the. Yeah, of bull, bulls sharks. will take you down. But if a bull shark bites a guy, he's not calling an interaction. I got the name of the dog. It's a hey. wired haired pointing griffin lab mix. And it's Jesus black. Jesus Christ. That's yeah, wow. so quite a mouthful. Uh, wired lab- pointed griffin. They're German dogs. Okay. Okay. So keep uh, that in mind when submitting your names. Oh, my God. I just remembered. Was it George the Rock or oh, somebody I played with or biz? Maybe this is your story. I don't know if I'm messing things up in my brain, but somebody bought like a very expensive 
German Shepherd from German, and then the thing only knew German. <laughs> oh, the dog. That the dog was George, only- and I forgot to. Why am I thinking that it was George? We're like, yeah, like I bought a, a, a authentic German Shepherd from Germany, but it didn't know any English. My, oh, my brother has a German Shepherd, and he only does commands in German. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he said it understands it better, but I asked Uncle Chaps. What are they? What are you moaning and groaning (laughs) under your breath for over there? I mean, you're familiar with world history at all. (laughs) Oh, well, you you hate England more than you hate Germany. Uh, I never said that. I said, how do you root for England? We didn't, Germany didn't make the final, so I never got Well, the guys they fought with Italy did. (laughs) And people said I messed Uh, up World War I. Apparently, Italy uh, wasn't as bad in World War I as they were in World War II. (laughs) I'm not a history major, I'm a math guy. Sorry oh. for interrupting. I've done it a lot already. I'll, That's I'll all right. That the whole no, episode. You're good. The Whit Dog, Ryan Whitney. I noticed you're back from Nantucket. Did you have anything interesting go on down there? Oh, uh, it was a great time. Uh, we got a place there last year, um, and it's nice. We rented out pretty much all year. Keep a couple weeks here and there. So we went down. Uh, my parents came, and then my brother Colin and his girl came, and my other brother's out in San Fran. So it was all family gathering, minus Sean and his wife Casey. So we're hanging. And I'll bring this up because it was a good argument. Now, listen, like the kids were asleep. And like, I think, you know, from listening to this pod, it gets loud. Like I'll be arguing with people just as my family does. It's a loud group. So this is this got pretty heated. And I'm interested to hear your opinions on it. My wife went down the store and she was picking up some stuff. We were in a grill for dinner and she pulls into the lot and there's a parking spot open and she sees this woman is standing in it, physically standing in it. And, she, you know, she's like, what's going on? She's like, I'm saving the spot. She's like, what? And immediately I'm like, you can't do that. You can't <laughs> stand in a parking spot. Like, if the cars go in there. If a car is double parked and he's got his blinkers on and you know, there's somebody leaving. Yeah, he's waiting for that spot. He's kind of saving it. A human being can't stand in the spot. Well, then all of a sudden my brother Colin bumps in with his girl. They're both like, no, no. You could stand in a spot. They think that's a legal move? I said, Colin, what? So this goes on. We're heated. My dad was with me. My mom was with me. We're like, no, humans can't stand in spots. I said, you know what? This has to go to checklists. I got to get the guy's opinions. I got to get the listener's opinions. Colin, listen to me right now. You've never listened to a podcast, so you're not listening. But if you see this highlight, if you stand as a human being in your clothes in a fucking parking spot and try telling people driving by they can't park there, you're the craziest motherfucker I've ever met. And I'll say this here and now. If somebody is in a spot standing or maybe they're doing like a lunge to hold up as much as the spot they can and I needed the spot, I would say I'm getting in that spot. And if they said we're not moving. I would take my phone out and I would film the whole interaction as I went, whatever, 0.5 miles per hour and just bumped into them <laughs> until they moved. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you can't physically hold a spot standing up, not in a vehicle well, for somebody that's coming well, later. I, I, I'm You're daring I'm, you to hit them. What I'm do you so, guys think? Am I, I'm, I'm, I'm so stubborn that if they were standing in the spot, I would block the parking space so they wouldn't be able to pull so my in dad even, said, when, so even my dad when they said. got there. He said, so he it's said, like, said, it's like, hey, yep. you want to, hey, you want to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, could, I'll I could play your game too. It's like uh, the Seinfeld when George and the other guy waited all night. Overnight, they waited. One guy, that wasn't with a stander though. I think George from Seinfeld would have just killed the guy if he was standing, <laughs> but it was more of that argument was I pulled the head of the spot to back in the correct way you're supposed to parallel park. And then some guy tried doing the front front squeeze in and that's an old tv show but yeah so i'm glad to hear you guys are on my side the the only excuse ra that i could give is like if it's if it's something where they're going to be there within like 60 seconds to maybe mm. a, a couple minutes that's, where they just it's just like hey run over grab that spot you were there first as, in the car yeah oh I, I was just trying to defend the other side but i think it's absolutely ridiculous and that should should not happen ra have you ever been in a situation like that with someone getting out of the spot to uh, stand there, I don't think I've ever seen it or had anyone do it. I mean, if you do it, you got to be within like 30 seconds of parking. Like you have to be banging a U-turn like like the, like what just said from Seinfeld. Or if you got to be like within 50 odds. I don't think you can hold it for like two, three minutes. But the thing is, you probably can because unless someone like what comes along and barrels into you with their car, <laughs> most people aren't going to have their bluff called and the people are just going to say, fuck it, they can have the spot. As far as turn around to park the right way in the street, I don't know. I mean, if you if you if you if I the spot is this. there, you should be able to nail it pretty hey, easy. Hey, plot twist. Park. Plot twist. It was Fudge Kid's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Just ruining your lives. I I walked by Fudge Fudge Place right after I uh 
PTSD. Right after I got off the boat. So I said this. I said, call. I'll give you this. If it's um, if it's a big, you know, football stadium parking lot and it's a tailgate, okay, because you know you want to be next to your buddies and there's so many other spots. But if you're on like a one a one way where you have to parallel, no, 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 no. And Big Dan Whitney came through with an ultimate argument, kind of sealer. It was kind of over for my brother and his girl Claire after this. He said, Colin, you can't walk through a drive through. You cannot walk through a drive through. If you walk through a drive through at McDonald's, we ain't serving you. You got to be in a car the same way you got to be in a car to save a parking spot. Is that true? You can't walk through a drive through? Can't drive-thru? walk through a drive through. I, I tried no, going through a drive through. They won't serve you. On a bike before. They wouldn't serve me on a bike once. They won't serve anyone and that's not in a car. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why I figured I'm on a bike. I'm on wheels. I'm driving through. They should fucking serve me. But I would say everything but rollerblades coming back to Columbia. 90. <laughs> I would say 98% of people who listen to this podcast have common sense and would agree with your take. And then the yeah, other 2% Colin, this is not going to be good for you, but I love you. The other, so. Yeah. The other 2%, uh, I don't know. Hey, so boys. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to, you know, get away from the hockey talk, but that was, that came right into my mind. I, oh, we had another one too. I'll bring that up later. Well, right. it's not, <laughs> it's not happening in Columbia. There's no way that, that, that that's happening down there. Or you'd get a bullet I, in the back of the head. Uh, Biz, can you believe they stopped this guy for a random bag search at Logan airport? When I returned to this country from Columbia, imagine some that listener this. working at uh, TSA. <laughs> I think they were just reading all the fucking wolf jokes in my Twitter replies for the last two weeks. And they're like, oh, well, let's see what this guy was dumb enough to do. But uh, yeah, dog came by for a sniff. I waited in customs. Like I flew in from Panama to Boston, which by the way, what a gorgeous flight. It's all water. You can go, you go right over Cuba, right over the Bahamas. You can see like Myrtle beach and Manhattan in the distance. I mean, if you're a guy who likes to look out the window on a flight, absolutely gorgeous views. But you know, I land, there's like two windows open at customs at Logan. It takes forever. I oh. finally get my bag and two guys there and they were very nice. They were doing their job. Very polite. I didn't write their names down and like, Oh, Hey, what's up? What are you doing there? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, had a good time. And like, all right, you've been randomly selected for a bag search. And I'm like, Hey, you know, whatever, if my number's up, so be it. I, I, yeah, I would never be stupid enough to do anything, especially coming back from a place like that. And you know, they take your bag apart, they bring the dog over and it's like, I'm not even nervous because I know I didn't do anything, but that one percent like X fact, like oh, I, I know what you're saying. Like uh, my roommate, I don't know. I know room- exactly yeah. why you got you're you're a sweater, and it was whatever it was coming out your pores. That dog was smelling. Was, that's what that, that's what happened. It, it could have been. Right? That, wait, but- wait, am I crazy here? The dog's like. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot he of gringos on my flight over either. through the terminal to RA. Uh, RA gives the dog a key talk. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but that's good that you had a great trip, RA. You deserved it. And uh, glad that we could get a couple great interviews. One of which, oh my goodness, guys, we got Alex Kalorn and Patty oh, yeah. Maroon on for the fourth time. And uh, it, was, it was great locker room banter. We got a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And glad we get the three-time Stanley Cup champion on. And don't, Ron Francis, if you're listening, don't take Alex Kalorn in the expansion draft, or I'm going to get Nancy Kerrigan's bodyguard over there. Was it her, her or the other one? How great would it be if they just yeah. took him out of spite at this point? They're like, this guy doesn't want to be here. We'll see how bad he doesn't want to be here. Alex Kalorn, come on down to the crackheads. You got the location right, Biz. Pacific Northwest. That's where all that Nancy Kerrigan shit went down. That's where she was from, Tanya Harding. So, oh, it, knew was that Tanya, ta- it was Tanya Harding's uh, bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff okay. Galuli, the yeah. most name, the, 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 the biggest name of a goon that would hit a figure skater with a metal pipe known to man. Jeff Galuli just sounds like a goon. <laughs> it is a guilty name. But all right, before we get to the highlights, I just want to say real quick, one last note on Columbia. Shout out to and congrats to my buddy Stu and his new wife, Mary. It was a, an awesome time, a true adventure. Lots couple of stuff clicks, every day. A couple clicks. Please. Couple clicks. And also to my boy, Didge. Uh, he's a longtime buddy of mine. We haven't got together in years. Ultimate road roommate. Just like no, no one of the talk, just no communication. We know what each is up to. So uh, a, an ideal road roommate for eight, eight days in Colombia. I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> uh, the best thing about being home oh, Jesus. is that I can finally find pink Whitney. Once again, had a struggle finding it down there. So I'm going to hit my local ASAP to load up on a few Mickey's, the old 375 milliliter bottle, the nice convenient size comes in handy to grab you. So grab yours before the clock is already running out on summer. I'm, Almost the end of July, boys. Only two weeks left. All right. Don't you, know where you're, that. you know where you're not going to be Eight having a problem finding it? Uh, the, a little birdie told me that it will be heading over to Europe pretty soon. Ooh. Pink Whitney. And will let me be tell you, the Finns and Swedes. The, oh, yeah. The Finns and Swedes have been asking for this liquor since it was invented. So I think it's going to hammer time Scandinavia. And England. 
and England. And sorry, Wales. guys, but RA doesn't want it to go there. So sorry. <laughs> uh, are the labels going to be in different languages or will they be the same? Like depending on the country. I don't know. That's, That's a, great a great question. question. We'll find out soon enough. Okay. But England all speaks English. And uh, so does Finland and, and Sweden. They all speak English. So I think they'll probably be the same. Maybe if we can get over to Prague, they'll throw it in some Czech writing. So my boy Ladislav Smeed knows how to read it before he drinks the whole thing. <laughs> we should reach out to Peter Forsberg to, uh, to get involved. Because, I mean, he was able to move all the Crocs over there. So I'm sure he can move Pink Whitney. He can move anything. He's on a stamp. Yeah pretty much in that in that land all right boys let's move along to the nhl transactions of the last week and there are quite wow. a few of them of different degrees and varying importance um the big one i would say minnesota buys out both forward zach parise and defenseman ryan Suda nine years after they both signed 13 year 98 million dollar deals uh parise wasn't a big surprise given how his season went but Suda certainly was. Uh, I guess he was so pissed off per our buddy Russo at The Athletic. He actually hung up the phone on Billy Garen when Garen called to tell him he was being bought out. Um, his agent, Neil Sheehy, said that he was planning on being there forever. Obviously, that's not going to happen. And, you know, the thing is, Minnesota is going to save uh, a little over $10 million this year, but they're going to get walloped the next few years. But uh, Billy Garen said this was an opportunity. He figured if he's going to do one, he might as well do both and get the savings this year. Uh, but either way, Biz, let's go to you first on this. How shocked were you that Suda got bought out? Well, I was going to snap it over to Wit because he knows a little bit about the uh, the American side of things. But as you said, a, a, a shock maybe to Suter, but definitely not to Parise, given with how it all transpired after uh, they ended up getting beat out of playoffs. He was a little bit snippy in his press conference, uh, probably not treated by the head coach the way he would have liked throughout the season. We remember that issue with when uh, he ended up becoming a healthy scratch because he tried to make the play uh, over to one of his teammates on the empty netter, ended up going back the other way, and the other team tied it up. But, I mean, I could understand – given the deterioration and maybe those guys not playing to a level they once did. And especially with the amount of money they're making, I was a little surprised at the fact that they did it given the repercussions of the buyout situation. You mentioned RA and year one, it's not too bad, but wit they're going to be getting kicked in the nuts a little bit for the next three years after that regarding this buyout. Yes, Biz, no doubt. And after a little bit of relief this year, the following year, I believe the team, is going to get charged 13 million right around 13 million against the cap and then the next two years it's around 14 million so big time penalties for them to go through with this but when you talk about garen and what he's done he's made it very clear that his job requires very difficult decisions um what i really respect about him and now i know bill bill garen a little bit i think he's one of the most respected gms in the game because of how he played and when i say uh being a gm and being respected it goes into he's been through all this he was bought out as a player. He was traded as a player. He's been through everything. He knows how difficult the, this is. And I'm sure there was parts of him that felt bad, but he also is in in working with the, the owner, Leopold. He knows this is what they had to do. Now, Parisi Biz, you said no surprise. I'm not surprised at all. And you hear about teams that he could sign with. Lamorello and Jersey's been close with forever from all his times. And Lamorello and the, the Islanders, excuse me. And, and Parisi was with him in New Jersey. And then also Pete DeBoer was his coach when uh, Parisi was the captain and went to the cup finals in 2012. So maybe Vegas is a spot he can land. But no doubt his game is, um, you know, not where it once was. He's getting older. He's had a lot of miles on him. He's played for a long time. We'll see where he ends up. The, the suitor one was surprising because he played a lot of minutes for them. I think he still considers himself, you know, a top four defenseman in the league. But if you look at it, I mean, Bill Guerin has tough decisions to make. They have to get Kaprizov signed. They have to get Fiala signed. And he just thought the timing was best now. If he was going to do it, he had to do both of them together. And in the end, I mean, they made enough money to be set for five lifetimes. And not to their fault entirely, but they didn't really get anything done there, right? I mean, in how many years did they play out nine. of that deal? Nine. 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 So nine of the 13 years, they went to the second round twice. One of the times they were swept. Um, the other time, I don't know how many games they were beaten. They beat Colorado one year. They beat St. Louis the next year in the first round. So in the end, I mean, they didn't, they didn't do what they were brought there to do. Now, that is a little harsh sounding because by no means is it their fault on their own. But for Suter to hang up on Bill Guerin, I don't know if I can say I agree with that. I was fucking one one hundredth the player Ryan Su player Ryan Suter is, but Bill Guerin isn't some fucking plug that's calling you, giving you the bad news. You just click on him. 
I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't agree with that. Um, but Ryan Sewer is a proud guy. And he, he in reading his agent's quotes, he thinks that he's got a lot of hockey left. And by the sounds of it, there's a lot of teams interested. Now, that makes sense, right? He's not going to really require or want a ton of money, I wouldn't guess, because he still has. They both still have, I think, $7 million coming to them over the next eight years. Maybe it's a little less. So whatever they sign for is just added on to that. They're probably going to end up making more money than they would have. At least Suter will. Now, I don't know um, do where you, wait, he let goes. Me, let me hop in here and yeah. ask you. Do, you. do you think given the penalty and and what they're still going to have to kind of retain as a result, do you think that anything like culturally could be said about that? Like, I don't know these guys personally either, right? Do you think that it's one of those looks where we just want new faces around, especially given the battle and, and some of the comments, at least made by Parise, where they're like, hey, maybe it's like we, we just kind of want to take these guys out of the situation. And also, of course, in year one, two, it allows them to spend a little bit more money um, locking in assets that they really want. Like Presoft's going to demand some more money, right? So they got that $10 million in cap relief. So it gives them that 12-month period at least to be able to shift some things and keep the guys around that they want in order to establish that new culture. And in the meantime, figure out things for the years after that where they will be penalized more heavily. Yes, and also, when you talk about the culture, Bill Guerin came in there, he got rid of Stahl, he got rid of Jason Zucker, he didn't bring back Miku Koivu, and now suter has gone, and now Parisi's gone. So he looks at it like, listen, this team's been together a long time, this core's been together a long time, they haven't got anything accomplished. In the end, they're all pretty much gone. He is looking to change the culture. That was immediately said when he was hired. Now, it took him a little longer than he probably thought to get everyone out of there, but now the guys in there are the guys he wants in there. And that's not at all saying he didn't want either one of those guys, but when looking at the future of this team, he just thought the time is now. Like, I'm not the guy to say it's the right decision. We'll find out this season. We'll find out how much hockey Ryan Suter has left to play. Talk about a guy on a mission now. I mean, that's a pissed off guy training the rest of the summer. Wherever he signs, he's got a lot to prove probably in his own mind. But he's looking to change that entire organization, and he's now pretty much done it. So now you end up seeing how this ends up going. What are they going to sign Kaprizov for? What's he going to get? They're certainly going to try to work that deal down. He actually had a funny quote, like something somebody asked him, does this mean now there's a little more money for Fial and Kaprizov? And Garen's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sticking to my guns on those guys. But – Definitely surprising to see Ryan Suter bought out. And I think part of it, when you talk about him hanging up on him, it's a blow, man. It's a blow to your ego and, and not even saying these guys have egos, but it's a blow to your character. Like to be bought out is tough and it happens so much more often and it happens more frequently now, but still, man, to, to sign that long of a deal and then to end that way, it's disappointing and probably emotional for both of them. Yeah. And the fact that he was blindsided by it, you know, that it was a, it was an off the cuff response so because he had no pre-warning so yeah i can't really hold it against a guy like that who was blindsided by that wit and i'll let you hop in no funny enough about being blindsided so Suter had a missed call from garen and he was working out or i don't know what he was doing but he had a missed call and then he gets a call from parisi picks it up and parisi this is all from mike russo's article in the athletic and parisi's like i just got bought out you know they're just talking and and so it's like actually i just had a missed call from garen and no shit, Garen calls in again and he answers. And that's how he found out. So I think maybe he thought Garen was calling to talk to his leader and longest, you know, tenor uh, wild about Parisi being gone. And turns out uh, uh, he was gone as well. So definitely, definitely tough to get the news that way. That is a good point. Um, I don't know if we want to shift away from that, R.A., if you have anything else to say about it, but you, you find a lot of these situations where these good players are getting bought, given that it's a flat cap and, and it's a kind of a new NHL era where you're seeing these guys, once they pass 30, it's it's not uncommon. And unfortunately, one of our good buddies, and I, I'm sure to some it's probably not a surprise in Keith Yandel, given with what, what transpired at the beginning of the year, at least he was able to do it somewhat amicably where he played out the last year in Florida. I know he's beloved by his teammates. He loved those guys there, but he's a little bit optimistic at the fact that now he gets to go to hopefully to a place, be in a situation where, you know, he's not going to make as much money and he, it's not going to be as scrutinized, but he gets to go play somewhere he, where he's going to be happy. And of course, he, where he gets and, to pick the potential to win. And wanted. That's and wanted. Thing. And so wanted. when you talk about these guys signing, it's like, you're finally wanted somewhere and any free agent um, will tell you like you may want to play somewhere, but if you got to convince a team 
Hey, come on. You want, you should want me. I can help you. It's never going to work out the same way it does for guys who are being begged by a team to sign. Right? So now you're going to get teams and I don't know how many for any of these guys getting bought out will become calling, but certainly for Keith Yandel, he's going to have some teams like, listen, come in, play on the third pairing, run the power play. How much would Bruins fans like to see Keith Yandel on their team? playing on the third pair and running the power play. Like, dude, let's go. Um, it, they got plenty of right money. defensemen. What? It, making biz money. Yeah. Fuck with his buyout though. It's, it's, it's still way more than biz money. It's way more than whip money. That's true. So, so I think that Keith, um, definitely tough. Cause he loves those guys and his family lives down there. He's going to live down there the rest of his life. He's going to retire there. So in, in talking to Zito, the, you know, Keith said it was definitely hard to hear the news, but in the end, he's going to be somewhere next year that they want They want him. And that's such a difference. That's such a relief to a player because when you're on a team and you know you're not wanted, whether it was Quenville or who knows, it's tough to go to the rink. And you know any mistake you're going to make is going to be uh, get you out of the lineup. And you saw Keith wasn't even playing at the end of the playoffs. So good luck to him moving forward wherever he ends up. But like I said with Suter, it's just hard for guys to hear this news because as a proud athlete, to, to get where you've gotten, it's based on believing in yourself and believing in your work ethic and doing things it takes to get to where you are. And all of a sudden you're told, hey, we don't want you. We're actually going to pay you not to play for us. So it's tough. All right. I texted uh, donor. I said, hey, I'll pay half Bian's salary if we can bring him back in. <laughs> hey, I, I would say the guys will be coming in after practice. It'll be me, donor, and Yans in the shower, staring at each other's hoses, fucking around. <laughs> They're like, everyone can stay besides Biz. Can you cover that horn up, please? <laughs> and just to clarify, too, Biz, I know you segued into it, but Florida did buy out Keith Yandel's final two years of his deal. He had two more years left at uh, $6.35 million. He is now unrestricted, can sign where he wants. And like Witt said, you know, it sucked at first, but I think he's pretty happy to get a fresh start somewhere. Where, where, again, like you said, what he's wanted. Uh, Florida's going to say. Also, sorry, all right, quickly. Sorry, like, and when I bring up buyouts and how they're they're happening so often, you even heard like Nugent Hopkins' contract was eight years. Like, they're probably planning on after year six. Like, that could be a buyout. That's how like contracts are done now, where you get the average deal, you get the average cap hit down by adding on to the years. You hear a lot about Landeskog, maybe Colorado can get the money down by giving them the eighth year. And these teams know now they won't be there. They won't will they will not be there for the end of these deals. So when even when Parisi and Suter sign those 13 year deals, it's like, are they still going to be playing then? Now if those guys retire, by the way, Minnesota can be really fucked. Hey, the, a couple couple things about the the Nugent Hopkins ones. Now that's probably one of the reasons why he ended up probably signing a more fair deal than than what we maybe expected based on his achievement because i don't think what is he making just just under five i think he signed for like a, a four and a half a aav no it's but, more but, than that but keep in mind though i don't think moving forward it's going to be as bad as it as it is right now this pandemic really fucked a lot of things up and the fact that it's a flat cap with these tv deals kicking in at that point in time getting uh, R and H at, at, at whatever he's making is and and given with how he trains in the off season, I think he's going to be okay at that time, but he's that's 5.7, 5. 5.7 for eight. Oh years. shit. That's yeah. what he got. Oh God. Yeah. Um, also, so go, when you talk about the flat cap and we'll get into this and all these other moves that's going on, a lot of these younger restricted guys besides Heskin and we'll go into his monster deal. But a lot of these guys, when you talk about Makar, they might just look for the bridge deal to let that cap get back up before they hammer home a monster one. So we'll see how it goes on with some of these RFAs, but it is a weird time with the flat cap and teams having to do gymnastics to get these, the, the, the roster set. I think I was thinking about Erickson Eck, maybe with the, the foreign change number. So sorry That's about okay, that. Okay, hey, that's, that's that's one. Pizza up the money, middle. dude, your money, uh, pizza up the middle. There's so many deals, and I think there's going to be tons more to follow given a month of chatter going on so far. But those are the two bio, big buyouts that, well, I say three big buyouts going on, but a couple of huge deals signed. Dallas gives uh, defenseman Miro Heiskanen, or is it Heskinen? Do we Have we figured out, is, is it Heiskanen? I say Heskinen. I, I, I hear every, every version of it. But either way, uh, he got his payday, eight years, $67.6 million extension. It's an 8.45 AAV. He's got a no-move clause the last four years. Uh, Dallas locks up their best D by far. It likely sets the market for Hughes and Makar as well. Uh, it's the biggest contract ever for a Finn in NHL history. Uh, what you can't really be surprised. He got this dough given what we've seen from this kid so far. No, not at all. Um, one of the best skaters in the league minute muncher can play the entire game, can play PK against the top lines. He is a top world-class player already at the ripe age of 22. Now I will say this in that dough that he's making, um, you expect 50 to 60 points. 
You know what I mean? Like you're looking at a guy there that when you're making that much money, you need him to produce offensively. Now he showed in the playoffs in the bubble. I think he had like 25 points in 20 games or, you know, 26 points in 27 games that run to the cup final um, in the playoffs the year prior in, in the Edmonton bubble. But he had 35 points in 68 games that year. This season, he had 27 points in 55 games. Now, he's playing so many minutes and playing such good hockey. Maybe in the end, they don't care if he's a 40-point guy because he does enough. But I look at it like, fuck, you're making that much dough. I think you need to do a little bit more offensively. He's so young. Klenberg is also running the power play there. So at some point, he'll maybe have a chance to take over that number one unit and play in a more offensive role. But an unreal player who not one not one GM, not one player around the league, not one fan of the Dallas Stars questions that contract. No. I truly believe that because the way this kid can skate and the way the game's played now, he is someone you lock up for as long as possible because he's a fantastic player to watch. And for younger defensemen that are trying to play in the NHL, he's a perfect guy to emulate your game after. Not many can because of how he moves, but he can do it all. So I love the signing. Well, fully agree on the fact when you make that much money as a defenseman, you need to be relied upon in every situation. Now, there are a few pretty cool moments I got to experience when I started my media career, one of which I've mentioned a few times with the Vegas expansion, seeing Derek England speak, and then them go on an absolute crazy run in that first year. I was there for the first ever game in Vegas. I was also there for his uh, Heskinen's first ever NHL shift against the Coyotes. And from the minute that fucking face-off happened, and he was just zipping up and down the ice like he was a fucking fourth forward, carrying and lugging the mail. I knew this kid was going to be special. And you think about guys, uh, or defensemen specifically, 23 and under, I would say there's about five or six of them that I would hand this type of money over to. You mentioned two of them already. Kale McCarr, who's probably going to be making a couple more million than that. Quinn Hughes, Zach Wierenski, Haskinen, and Adam Fox. Those guys, 23 and under, those are the five studs I can think of up top of my head who deserve Is Wierenski this. that young? 23 he- years old. Oh. He, I think he went to University of Michigan for one year. I actually played against Zach Wierenski in the AHL. He, oh, he joined, joined that team in uh, Lake Erie when they Lake, won it, right? It was, I was, uh, yeah, who the fuck is this guy? I knew that that was going to be the only time he spent in the AHL. Basically stole another Calder Cup right off my finger. I was supposed to be a two-time ECHL All-Star and a two-time Calder Cup Bullshit. champion if it wasn't for that fuckhead. Bullshit. So anyway, I'm happy he got a bridge deal, actually. But uh, but well-deserved. And, and and like you said, uh, Whit, any, any gym in the league would have handed over that money. And I think, of course, and I say it time and time again, the fact that no state tax in, in, in Dallas probably helped them getting Texas. get him at a little bit of uh, – oh, I mentioned, yeah, both. in Texas. It's both. Dallas is in Texas. True. Correct. Thank you, R.A. Uh, helped them get that average down even maybe a little bit more. So congratulations to him. They got a stud on the back end, and uh, and he locked in a long time. And, and with uh, – all right, the cap hits eight five. Sorry, uh, eight eight point four five AAV. Okay. Yep. So when the cap goes back up and this pandemic's in our complete rearview mirror in five years, eight point four five for him might look awesome. Five. You might be laughing at this deal in four or five years. So when I said that you look at deals and you look at buyouts as a very possible um, scenario at the end. I'm talking UFAs. This is a guy in eight years will be in his prime. So this is not a worry at all. And it's a completely different situation. And that's a cap hit. Talk to me at the end of this deal. And you may be thinking he's one of the better bargains in the league. Well, what you want to talk about better bargains in the league. How about the deal? The Bruins signed defenseman Brandon Carlo to six years, 24.6 mil. He took a bridge deal before this only comes out to 4.1 average annual value. Uh, this is a guy who's probably given up some money on the table. He's a huge part of the bees. Top four guy plays on the right side behind Charlie McAvoy. Were you surprised they got him this cheap? No. Um, I think that, that, as let me hop as in this... quickly with does, do the, does the concussion aspect? Yep scare you at all and maybe a reason that they were able to get that number down exactly what i was just gonna say i think that as odd as this sounds his injury has kind of helped the bruins in this negotiation and for sure they'd rather pay the guy more and have him be completely healthy but it's scary right is it two now ra in the past two years or is it three he had two in fucking three months yeah going back. so yeah you know, you're looking at a, a team and an organization who's been through one of the best players of all time in Bergeron missing a full year, and he was able to come back and be this world-class player. So you hope Carlo's okay. But 
he's definitely a guy who opens himself up to some of these hits. And the Wilson hit, people, you know, they went nuts about it. He got a big suspension for it. But maybe be a little bit better at protecting yourself. I'm not blaming him at all. Don't try to twist my words around. But in the end, you got to be able to protect yourself while playing the game he does. And I think he's good enough defensively. He's shown that when he's not in the lineup, they are not even close to the same team. So he's deserving of this deal. But they were able to get it at a number I think is very fair for the team because of the past injuries and because of the issues. And you never really know what's going to happen here. You don't know. Like this kid... Knock on wood, fucking hope to God he doesn't get another one. But it, it it is a deal they're signing with some risk involved, no doubt. But, I mean, it's it's a classic case. We always go back to the Sidney Crosby interview. If you don't take less, then it doesn't trickle down. And this is a classic case of the, that entire roster. You look at them. They all fall in line. They all want to stay together. They want to win. They put that – they put winning more of a value as in, what, getting an extra two hundred fifty to $500,000 a year. And you're kind of – you know, you're seeing a bit of a, t- a tough situation right now in Colorado. And, and and I'm sure one situation that Joe Sackick's looking at is, you know, once you give that money to the top guy, well, one of the top guys like Lanniskog, what type of precedent does it send to the rest of the group who are going to eventually have to sign as well? I mean, I don't expect McKinnon to take a bargain bargain deal and I don't expect McCarr to take a bargain deal. But if you see the, the top end guys do it, you're more than likely to say, yeah, do I need 100 100- hundred million career earnings or, or is 90 okay do i want my name in the cup or not that that's should be the determinant factor right i mean yeah. well, not not every guy is gonna gonna be the, the his only thing but i mean that's what you play for man should we shift over to, shift over to that topic is that, is that one that you had down for the i had it actually a little bit further but first biz we're having all this talk about teams trying to save money and you can too on your student loans by checking out earnest because with today's low interest rates it's a great time to refi your student loans Earnest offers low-rate student loan refinance, and and you can check your rate risk-free in just two minutes. With Earnest, you get radically flexible payments, and you can pick your loan term. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into a simple monthly payment. And if you have questions, you can even talk to a real live human at Earnest for help. Is it a time you stop feeling overwhelmed by your student debt? Right now, Earnest is giving our listeners a $100 bonus. Refinance your student loans at earnest.com slash chicklets. Now av- not available in all states. Terms and conditions apply. So visit earnest.com slash chicklets for more details. That's E-A-R-N-E-S-T dot com slash chicklets. C-H-I-C-L-E-T-S. Again, terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinance are made by Earnest Operations, LLC, NMLS, number 12049170. California Finance and Law License Number 605-4788-303 Second Street, Suite 401N, San Francisco, California, 94107. Visit earnest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. Go ahead, Biz. Um, to hop in with a couple of things, I love how they have to mention that you, you get to talk to a real-life human. That just tells you the, the era we're in. Yeah, how it's, it's it's a lot of I just press zero. Hey, when I call, I just like press zero, zero, zero until I and, get a human on the phone. That's yeah, same here. Um, but and, and uh, going back to that Carlo deal, I don't think you necessarily want to be the guy in Boston making a little bit too much money either because if things aren't going well, that's probably a fan base you want to keep on your side. Do you think that factors into it, RA? I don't think the fans are going to get on people for that. I, I, just, I just think it's a, a within the team philosophy. Like guys are just going to take below market to stay there with the opportunity to win. I don't know how much longer that's going to last given the way I know, the, the season went last year. And, you know, people like myself thought they were a lot stronger than they were going into the playoffs. And the Islanders said, hey, you're not quite where you think you are. So uh, I don't know how much longer this era is going to go on. Tuca's obviously getting surgery. We don't know exactly when he's going to be back. But, uh, yeah, you wonder how long that um, – I don't know. I don't know. Financial window. camaraderie, I guess you'd call it, is going to last in a room like that. I mean, eventually guys are going to want to get paid uh, with, their, with their worth, but it's an interesting dichotomy for the Bruins right now. Okay. I like that word, Biz. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll save Landeskog for a little bit because that's kind of tie, ties into the UFA stuff. Oh, and we've the been Seattle blue ball in the Landeskog talk. Yeah, well, with it also, you know, when you got big trades going on, Biz, you, you got a blue ball of Landeskog talk. I mean, Philadelphia, everyone's been talking about their D for years. Well, they went out and they got themselves Ryan Ellis from Nashville. That's a huge fucking trade. Gritty Jr. <laughs> they sent Phil Mini Myers. Gritty. <laughs> gritty Jr. No, Voracek was Gritty Jr. Uh, Philly traded Phil Myers and Nolan Patrick to Nashville for Ryan Ellis. Uh, they shore up their D with a vet leader. Then Nashville went and traded Patrick to Vegas. 
uh, for forward Cody Glass. He was their first ever draft pick. So Vegas has already traded their first three bat draft picks from the first round that first year. Uh, Suzuki went for Patch already, and they traded on. Um, What's his face? Brandstrom for Mark Stone. So they don't have any of their first year picks left. Uh, But Ellis, a 30 year old right shot D, he's got six years left at 6.25 mil AAV. I mean, he's a top four guy in Nashville, probably a top pair guy anywhere else, like he's going to be in Philly. What was your reaction to this one, Biz? We'll go to you first here. Well, that's a nice one-two punch now with Provorov, who is is another defenseman in this league that is that is young and is an absolute stallion. Now, um, the good news for Nashville. Is, and who's also is what pro- is <laughs> well they they have they've always been good at drafting and developing d and they're actually the only team in this expansion draft to protect five defensemen yep some so, did, some didn't even protect four right most teams went with the seven three one model so in order to relieve a little bit of cap space of course it's hard to say goodbye to ryan ellis but if you have other guys coming up and and i mean Poyle has proven time and time again that he's able to draft defensemen and develop them. And if he thinks he can get the same type of production from guys making far less, yes, it was it was probably the time to to move on from him. So uh, a great pickup for Philadelphia because yeah. they did need help on the back end. They never ended up getting uh, what they thought they were going to get from Goss to spare. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. He's still on the roster with them, and and I I would imagine that they're ho- they're going to hope to maybe he could turn the corner and give them the production that they expected and, or move on from them. But I think that this was a great trade in, in it for everyone involved. Nolan Patrick, another guy who's been dealing with head issues, beloved in the locker room. He ends up going over to, um, to, to Vegas, who has tried to add a little bit of depth at the center ice position. He did not produce to the level of, of which we expected last season, but that's him coming off a full year missed with the head problems. Now, the shitty thing for Vegas is they have to move on from Cody glass. The only thing about Cody glass that would scare me is the fact that he hasn't played a lot of hockey in the last couple of years. He was highly touted coming out of junior. He played four years there. I think he was at, I think he, a couple of the years, he ended up averaging over a hundred points and, but we haven't seen what he can do at the pro level. In the AHL, he was very dominant, but we have not seen what this kid's been able to accomplish at the NHL level based on what expectations were. So I thought I hope I did a good job of summarizing all of it. We know exactly what we're going to expect from Ryan Ellis. This guy's an incredible defenseman. He's going to provide a lot to the back end for Philadelphia. I think everybody wins in this trade. I'm interested to see if they pair him and Provorov together, which would be a sick top pairing. I don't know if they're going to try to spread that out. We'll see what goes on there. But together, they could be formidable, formidable on the blue line, together playing. Um, In terms of Glass and, um, excuse me, Nolan Patrick, they kind of remind me of each other. And I know Glass hasn't had the injuries, but it's two young guys, lottery picks. Or, you know, Glass was sixth. Nolan Patrick was, what, second or third? He was second. So, Two guys that haven't really done what, what, you know, both teams thought they would when they were picked that high. So let's give them a fresh start. And I think um, Nolan Patrick has a lot of uh, familiar familiarity. Is that the word with McCrimmon from his time in the WHL? And then Cody Glass is a guy who I don't think he's the best skater. That's one question mark. Skill level super high. But like you said, Biz, he hasn't played a ton. So this is one of those things. If both guys went on to star in, 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 in Philly and Vegas, I wouldn't really be surprised. Now, right now you can't really pencil them in for being elite top two line players. Cause they haven't proven it yet, but the skills there, that's why they were drafted that high. Let's see if they can take off in a new role. And maybe Cody glass gets a chance that he never got in Vegas. He, he was never given the opportunity. I don't know if he deserved it to play on a top two role. So in Philly, he's going to go there. Maybe he gets that chance and we see what happens. But two guys looking for fresh starts that make sense. I love Ellis. One of the best shots in the league from the point. He could skate. He could play a ton of minutes. No matter what, uh, Nashville protects five defense, but they're still losing a 23-minute per game guy. And so I think it's going to be hard for them to get over that, but they do have the depth to be able to do it. The The thing in Nashville in terms of not protecting Johansson and, and, and Duchesne is interesting because will one of those guys get selected, both make an eight a year. Um, but Nashville's making moves and Pekka Rene retired. So we'll go into that, but a, a crazy week overall. And, and for that organization to see that much change is, uh, is, cra- is not crazy, but it's certainly different. 
I just wanted to hop in there quick. You misspoke. Uh, Cody Glass, of course, going to Nashville. You, sorry, you, sorry. No buddy. worries. Yeah, there's a there's a lot going the three on. Three team with trades that. mess with my brain. It's like I'm thinking of somebody holding the parking spot three with their body. Three team trade. We haven't even yeah. got to this expansion draft situation. Yeah. No. We yeah we got a few more beats it's to get fucking crazy before we get to that. Yeah, it's a lot of shit to talk about. And like I said, I know the expansion stuff is big news that the list, but. You know, the only 30 of these guys are going to end up getting picked, but we'll get to that in a little bit. We still got some of the major stuff to get to. Uh, real quick, Patrick and Glass are both RFA. Like well, I said, they were both taken in 17. As for Myers, uh, he's 24. He's got two years left at 2.55 mil. Uh, he had a goal and 10 assists last year in 44 games. So uh, yet another defenseman on the move. This was a bit of a surprise, I guess, because Colorado trying to maybe find money, move money around or whatever, but they traded defenseman Ryan Graves to the Devils for forward Mikhail Maltsev in a uh, second rounder in 2021. Graves had, let's see, two more years left at 3.166 mil, 15 points in 54 games last year, six points in 10 playoff games. Uh, Maltsev is a 21-year-old forward in the last year of his entry-level deal. Uh, the thought is that Colorado was likely to lose Grave in the expansion draft for nothing, so they figured they'd get something for him instead. Uh, the big D man will definitely show up New Jersey's D, which had a lot of issues last year. Wit, let's go to you for your reaction. Oh, I was, on this I deal. wanted this oh, one. You go, all you biz. Tap, Wait, biz like tap, this, tap biz that like stick, Graves. baby. I get it okay. over to you. So I, I really like Graves, but look at this five defensemen. I would imagine Eric Johnson does not get selected because he was left unprotected. This is the top four, uh, five D for Colorado next year. McCarr, Taves, Gerard. Byram and then of course Eric Johnson if he doesn't get selected I think this was a great move in order to get a second round pick for this guy I think that on that team he's a he's a fifth defenseman um I don't know if the I don't know if uh, the not so great end to the playoffs played a factor in this at all but given his cap hit in a situation where they're going to need some money to free up I think that considering he's a fifth defenseman on this Colorado team they could easily find a replacement for, for, for what he is, and they get a second-round pick back. I like him. I think he's going to go on to have great success in New Jersey, but this is a great move by Sackick. He is all over it. His, his fucking asset management – it, and, and give credit to his assistant GM. I don't know his name, but he he's a, 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 apparently touted as one of the best guys. Why are you laughing like that, R.A.? Because of how excited I am about it? No, I'm not laughing at you. I, I, ha I was – Pulling up some other notes, yeah. I, 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 I tell you, if I was laughing at you, like I always do, no, I wasn't oh. laughing at you in this particular case. What do you think of my breakdown, Wit? Biz, I love your breakdown. I think you did a great job. And I think it's really good in Jersey to bring this guy over. He's a top four defenseman for the New Jersey Devils. It's been a struggle there for a while. So you get a guy in there who can play PK. He's a prick to play against. And Colorado, like you said, they get something back for somebody they would have lost for nothing. So it really does work out. I'm surprised more teams um, weren't involved. I don't know if people didn't want to pay what Jersey was willing to give up for him. A second round pick's pretty good asset. I know nothing about the forward that was returned to Colorado. Excuse me on that. But, uh, makes sense for both teams it really does i think that colorado is probably going to miss that guy a little bit though it's it's a lot easier said than done to replace a player who's a big defenseman who can log minutes and and play on the pk but we'll see what happens they have enough skill up front but they do need that grit i this mean on the an, back end this is not a knock to graves either you, you got to be careful of how much stock you're putting in these fourth and fifth defensemen on teams that are so deep and 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 these guys are protected. They're playing a lot of the game in the offensive zone. They're a wagon, right? So let's see how he does in New Jersey. But I think overall, Sackett crushed it on this. And you're looking at their decor. I don't think they're going to bat an eye. Uh, what was wrong with Eric Johnson? Did he break his leg last year? Uh, I don't um, know the injury that he had. I thought I it was don't. an upper body injury because oh, he only played four body? games last year. Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was. Um one other trade to get to here, uh, well, a couple more, but uh, Toronto sent forward uh, Philippe Hollander, Hollander in a seventh rounder in 23 to Pittsburgh for forward Jared McCann. Uh, McCann's 25. He's got one year left at 2.94 mil. Had a great year for Pittsburgh last year. 14 goals, 18 assists in 43 games, one assist in six playoff games. Uh, Hallander is a 21-year-old Swedish center, taking 58th overall in 18. Still in his entry-level deal, has yet to play in North America. Uh, Toronto gets a pretty versatile forward at a really good price. Uh, Pittsburgh sheds almost three million in salary. Now I know Toronto did leave him exposed, but I don't think they picked this kid up to to lose him. I, I'm figuring it was just a numbers game where they got to take that risk. But I would imagine he'd be back in Toronto, Biz. You think? Well, I mean, that's if Seattle doesn't pick him up. Now, from what I was reading online, uh, Pittsburgh's very high on the kid from Latvia, Teddy Bluger. 
Is that how I pronounce his last name? Yeah. Where he, he he's very solid defensively. Pittsburgh fans were upset because McCann's a little bit more versatile where when guys are banged up in the top six, he's a guy that he can insert on the top six role for, for whatever period of time he needs to. And he helps out their power play as well. But I mean, I don't know. I, I, I thought it was bizarre that they made the move and let them unprotected, but that's probably because they know more than we do about what's going on with the expansion draft. I don't know if there's conversations going on between these GMs. Like, yeah, yeah I was we're wondering not, that too. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it, it's it, it's like, like the like, Carey Price situation. Like I, I would mean, imagine that 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 uh, Berger, Berger Van and Ron Francis have had conversations about this. They've known each other thirty something years. I'm sure that you know they could talk off the record or whatever. You know, not make it public, or, uh, however. But yeah, th- these guys definitely talk. So many of these guys know each other, talk throughout the year all the time, and there are probably many, many off the record and converse- conversations that probably border on tampering that you're not going to hear about. And, and, and maybe it's a situation like this. Maybe they bring in and trade for McCann and give up a couple pieces as a little bit of a, you know, dangle the carrot, like a big shiny toy as opposed to, to maybe Seattle taking somewhere else or, or taking someone else, excuse me. So I don't know, man. I don't know if it's mine torpedoes getting thrown, but uh, there's a lot more that, that, that are, that's going on behind the scenes that we there's know. There's so much like gamemanship going on. And who knows? Like there could be, there could be some... Um... Maybe I'll a let little you crush dis- my wife if you don't take this guy. Yeah, maybe a little me. dishonesty. Maybe chucking the wife in the mix in terms. Do <laughs> you want to not take this guy? She's beautiful. She looks great right now. I don't know. I don't know. But I actually, there was moments this year in Pittsburgh. McCann looked great. They won that division. It was a complete disappointment the way it all ended. But he looked nice. So I think that if Toronto doesn't lose him to Seattle, he could fit right in there. Yeah, he's a hell of a versatile player, like we said. Uh, we got a few more transactions before we send it over to our boys, Cologne and Maroon. Uh, let's see. The Rangers sent the seventh rounder in 2022 to Tampa for pending UFA Barkley Goodrow, basically to get first dibs on negotiating. He had 20 points in 55 games last year. Obviously, he has a winning pedigree, pedigree after winning the cup the last two years. The Rangers uh, also traded forward Brett Howden to Vegas for pending UFA defenseman uh, Nick D. Simone in a fourth and 22. See, oh, yeah, the Islanders, they were pretty busy the last few days. They sent forward Andrew Ladd to Arizona along with three picks. They got nothing in return. This was basically just incentive so that they would take his money off their hands. I love how business team, all they do is, like, take Pronger, fucking Datsu. All the Coyotes do is take guys who are done playing as their cap hits. It's Stash so pathetic. Cash. Look at all these legends on like our, on our, in our franchise. You got a Myself. bunch of Hall of Famers. And they just none of them play hockey anymore. Hosa. <laughs> Hosa's dealing uh, it up there too. I forgot about him. Listen, All the fucking coyotes do is stop laughing. Deals. Dash, stop dash. laughing. When I, when I saw hey, when I saw it girl across the ticker and everybody, the fact that it's literally just four assets coming to us and they're like, we're good. We don't need anything. Just, no, just, take, just take them. Just take them and so, take all these picks too. So I think there's a conditional third rounder and that's if Lad ends up playing a game. Um, I, I know the two of the picks are conditional. Honestly, I usually write the conditions down, but I read, but he's not expected to play again. So I don't, I don't know that we're going to see him again. They basically had to entice Arizona to take his 5.5 cap it for the next two years. So they gave the picks and that's what they got. Island has also sent defenseman Nick Letty to the D- Detroit Red Wings for forward Richard panic in a second in 2021. Uh, Letty's a 30 year old. Who's got one year left at 5.5 mil. Panic is 30 as well. He's got two years left at 2.75, and Detroit is eating half of that. And the Islanders shed $4 million in salary. There's lots of speculation they're going to try to load up for a free agent somewhere too. So uh, they shed salary in addition to a pretty good defenseman in Letty. I think they got a couple guys they got to re-sign. And they, and they did yeah. leave Josh Bailey and Jordan, Jordan Ebley, uh exposed. Now, uh, oh, God, I, what was I going to say? Oh, I got, I got a tweet from somebody saying uh, – <laughs> Andrew Ladd was making five and a half million to coach his kids like mini mites team last year on long Island. And, and that they, he was coaching against him. So he's like, I'm happy that he got dealt out of here. Cause we we're obviously getting out coached every night in Timbits hockey. <laughs> I love so, how, I love how like too, he goes to the coyotes. Like if you get traded to the coyotes, basically it's like, ah, sorry, you got to retire. Yeah. You're done. Hey, you're on, done. On, on a serious note, 
I thought the Coyotes rushed the rebuild. They they ended up picking up Kessel. They ended up making the move for Hall, giving up a first rounder for that. The Coyotes need to get worse before they get better. They need to acquire picks, some of which they lost because of a situation I don't want to revisit because it's very scarring to me. But this was the play. One other unfortunate loss for us is Aiden Hill because I guarantee not he necessarily yet, right? No, he's gone. He got traded over to San Jose. There's a lot yeah. going on here. He, he, because uh, I thought they were I, trying to trade Kemper or something. What's so, the, yeah, but correct. There's a lot of talk about Kemper. I've heard rumors about Toronto trying to pick him up. Now he is a world class goaltender with one year left at four and a half. I would assume that partly it was they weren't getting what they thought was fair market value. So they wanted to trade Aiden Hill over who I think that could eventually be a top 15 goalie in the league. He has the pedigree. He stepped in and had to be the starter last year when Ronta and Kemper ended up getting going down with injury. So I think the San Jose Sharks got a good one. Now going back to Darcy Kemper, I think he's far more valuable, especially as teams get desperate going, going into the season. And even potentially at the deadline. Yeah, for a team who wants to shore up the goaltending going into the playoffs, you mean? I I would say no less than a first rounder and a prospect, given the fact of what he can bring as a goaltender and with a cap hit of four and a half million. That's more than two times less than what Carey Price making, and I think that he's he he's proven in the last three years that when he's playing, yeah, numbers wise, he's just as good as any elite goaltender in the league. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, Coyotes made some good moves, and I think that they're going to be looking to un- unload even more guys. I heard Christian Dvorak's names in the mix. They basically said anybody's fair game at this point in time other than Jacob Chikrin. Yeah. Ask, Ask Masha 49, 4, 4, 20, 69 on Twitter told you that one, Viz. Which one? <laughs> Ass mash of four twenty six. No, no, I got the fucking Twitter handle about which part. <laughs> I don't know, all of them probably. <laughs> I'm busting your balls, buddy. Come oh, on. Fucking, oh, yeah. I, I love you. Be... I mean, I've been hearing it. It's like some guy with four this, followers. He started wait. his account a month ago. <laughs> yeah. And it was mine. It was my burner. Yeah. Burner. I've been hearing online the Coyotes are going to the AHL. It's like oh, you, they might just have to leave the league. Hey, and another guy who's who's up for a big contract, Connor Garland. So I don't think yeah. I don't know if they're I don't know if they're gonna sign him and then and then move him or or uh, trade him now because he's a restricted free agent. So some team's gonna need his services, but the Coyotes need to get worse before they get better. We got to get some high end picks in here, and uh, I've said enough of that. Why were well, you laughing? Because I kept talking about the Yotes. I'm laughing because you say they got to get worse before they get better. It's like how much worse do we have to get? All right, Biz, I'll move it along for you. Island has also uh, re-upped Andy Green, veteran defenseman, one year, 750K, uh, 250K in bonuses. This guy doesn't leave. No, yeah, he was left unprotected, but you know he was a pretty good, steady veteran presence for the last couple of years in the Islanders in the playoffs. So, and just to go back to that Aiden Hill deal, San Jose traded a second in 2022 and goalie Yosef Coronat to Arizona for Aiden Hill and a seventh in 22. Hill is RFA, made 800K last year. Pretty good prospects from. He had a pretty decent year uh, for Phoenix last year. Uh, a couple other signings here. Pittsburgh signed forward Teddy Bluger. Biz, you just mentioned him. Two years, uh, $4.4 million deal. Calgary signed forward Brett Ritchie to a one-year $900,000 deal. Uh, Dallas also added, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, also traded Jason Dickinson. This was a little earlier. They traded D- Jason Dickinson to Vancouver for a third in 2021. And Florida re-upped Anthony Duclair, three-year $9 million deal. And defenseman Gustav Forsling, three-year, eight million dollar deal. Uh, what else? Going, going to Forsling, um, people seem to love him, and then that number they got him at. Now, also Duclair, he was left unprotected as well, right, Ra? After signing the deal, yeah. Where, yeah. where that's another guy who might get picked up in that expansion draft. Here. I would Great. pick him. I would pick him, especially with that deal for three million. So, I mean, he's proven like, the, granted, he's proven it on one-year deals lately. You know, when he's like has to play well, but I don't know who else. I don't have the entire Florida list in front of me, but that guy can move. He could skate and it's not a huge hit. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that's a pick by Seattle. And boys, we had a couple of uh, retirements since we last met. Uh, Pekka Rene retired after 15 NHL seasons, all spent with Nashville. Uh, he played 683 games. He's the franchise leader in games played, wins, goals against, time on ice, shutouts and saves. NHL history, he's 19th in shutouts, tied for 19th in wins. He won the Vesna back in 18. He was a finalist three other times. 
Uh, most games played wins and shutouts by a Finnish goalie of a, uh, obviously the best goalie in Nashville franchise history. He kind of really helped solidify them, make them become a contender. And he had the option. He said he had the option to come back, but he just felt the time was right uh, now. And, and he hung him up. Any thoughts, boys, on uh, Pekka Rene? I have a lot. And, and without knowing the guy, you, you just hear nothing but great things. And now we say this a lot about guys who retire, but this guy truly was one of the favorite predators to ever play in that organization. Fans absolutely loved him. He was so friendly. He treated everyone with such respect. And I remember when he won the Vesna, he gave an emotional, like teary eyed speech. I think it was his fourth try. I was reading, trying to get the best, and he finally won it and gave this amazing speech where you kind of saw the character and, and, and a guy who's worked so hard to become one of the top goalies in the league. And did he not have some seasons there? Holy shit. He was a monster increase for them. He was so big. I think he was one of the – I'm not going to say this is why at all, but he was one of those first huge goalies when you're like, is this the future? And you see Vasilevsky, you see how tall and big some of these goalies are. And Rene made it look so easy. And I think that when you see teammates talk about him, Joel Ward gave a quote in the athletic article I read about how great of a guy he was, so down to earth. It also said that after every game, win or lose, he's meeting young kids that are at the game, whether they were sick or whether they were going through tough times. He's the guy who's getting down low, talking to him face to face. And the way he played was just he made the he made it look so easy when he was on. There was just nothing to shoot at. And I, I mean, you got to respect him, too. He's retiring. He didn't have to, but he realizes his, his heart isn't in the game anymore. His head isn't in the game. But that's a guy who was a Predator Hall of Famer. I don't know if they have that. Maybe he does end up getting his number retired there someday. But the fans were so grateful. And the way the season ended, too, he gave the skate around the rink. I don't know if you remember the lap around the rink in his last game or his last home game, whatever it was. So a goaltender that will kind of be remembered forever. I mean, he won a Vesna trophy and he was a dominant player for a long time in the NHL. So congrats on an amazing career. And you talk about growing the game too. And I mean, you go down to Nashville and you just see the way that the players interact with the fans yeah. and to see a guy of that stature doing it. And we, you know, we always mention the culture, the culture, the culture. I ended up going uh, down there to do an NHL first timers with uh, Jalen Ramsey and you, you see during warm-up all the fans and all the guys giving knuckles on the glass. You had, I mean, I think PK was still there at the time. You see, obviously, Rene do it. And he's one of those guys that he, you know, he created the culture there. And that's the reason why this, you know, non-traditional hockey market was able to to rise to where they have, where they're selling out the building all the time. And it's the biggest party in town. So congratulations on, on a wonderful career to Peck Irene. Hopefully we can get him on the podcast to talk about it. Now, RA, was there any, was there any mention of him sticking around with the organization or is he just going to kind of back off for a year and, I, I didn't read anything. That's not to say that's not true. I, I don't know if that's what he's going to do right now. I, I get the impression he was just going to kind of step away from a bit, but I'm sure that's the type of uh, organization. He's the type of player where if he wanted to do anything, yeah. they would gladly open the door for a guy like that. Yeah. I think they got Ben Vanderklok there as the goalie coach right now, but not even necessarily to, to be a goalie coach, but just to be a guy who's around the rink and, you know, maybe uh, the management's able to, to pull him in where they can vet situations and get his opinion on things, or even to just be a guy who, who, who's shaking hands hands and kissing babies so i don't know if uh, some of these guys when they're done they do like to go back home uh, you know back over to their uh, the, the countries where they come from but to, i tell you what man uh, you, you never heard a bad thing about the guy and i've still to this day never never met a bad scandinavian fact all is, right well, is, are, are finnish guys scandinavian I was, I'm, you know what there's one of the f countries in that area that's not scandinavian i saw my thing go out i always say, i always i thought it was norway group. i i'm not sure i'm gonna google it right now we'll do it because i don't know maybe it's norway and sweden are con considered scandinavian yeah i no. think finland's i know one of them that you think is a is a uh i scandinavian throw, I throw country, finland in the mix they might get offended by that so if they do i'm sorry yeah let's see uh and i hate using wikipedia but <laughs> Because I don't, unless I double check it, but Scandinavia it can refer to Den Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. So, yeah, I don't think Finland is oh. considered Scandinavia. Dash two. <laughs> that's right. I'll get you biz. Uh, we had another retirement as well. Kevin Miller retired after seven NHL seasons, all with the Bruins. Uh, tough as nails defenseman. He was a California native, played at UVM, never drafted, became an NHL regular at 26 years old and became a hell of a player, man. He kind of come along and replaced Adam McQuaid when the Bruins needed a, a guy to sort of do that for them. Uh, one of the toughest players of his era, I'd say, uh, Biz. I know he didn't fight as much as other guys. I think people didn't want to fight him because he was so tough. 
Uh, it's tough. Like I said, tough as nails, stay at home defenseman, absolute warrior, beloved by his teammates. And he had to run a real bad injuries, man. He broke yeah. his kneecap in 2019. Then he was rehabbing to get back to the playoffs, broke it again during the Eastern conference finals, missed the whole season, was able to come back next year. Um, just a great guy. I was fortunate to meet him shit, probably a decade ago before I didn't even know who he was. The Bruins hadn't drafted him. The organization signed him to the minor league deal. And I just randomly met him in the press box one night and shot the show at him. He's just such a nice guy. You couldn't help but root for him. So, uh, I was very happy. He got a, a pretty good career. I wish it could have lasted longer, but personally want to send congrats to Kevin on, on an absolutely great run. And again, he was a warrior in black and gold. Wit, I mean, it's you, you've talked about it many times, the, the amount of uh, you know emotional and mental strain that these injuries can, can pile up. And basically, he just, you know, he, he just can't do it anymore. It's yeah, just, he just became too much. And that's a guy who did every possible thing to get and stay healthy and he was able to get back and it just you know sometimes it's not meant to be and that's not to say that um his career wasn't awesome and i don't think he ever imagined he'd, he'd have the career that he did when he was younger another guy i'd love to talk to uh but an unheralded guy coming out of college right he had to bide his time and he had to earn his spot and then it's just unfair life is so unfair we've talked about that a million times but he just couldn't stay healthy and part of it is the physicality and, and, the, and the, the aggression he brought to the game and that's how he played obviously it's going to be way harder to stay healthy when you're playing the way he did but it wasn't even like you know it wasn't even like crazy plays that got him injured it was just over time and you, the kneecap to come back and break it again that's when you kind of knew he was in one but when you talked about him not fighting that much already it was true i don't think anyone wanted to go him the, the fact that they went from McQuaid to him, it was they were so similar. They'd stand in there and beat your face in and smile while they did it. And then they're two of the nicer guys away from away from the ice. So um, I saw Chris Wagner put out a nice post talking about the, you know, the ultimate ultimate competitor, ultimate teammate, something like that to that extent. So that was a guy when you watched him play, you saw the improvement, too. Throughout his career, he kept getting better and better. All of a sudden, he worked with Adam Oates, right? We had talked with him working with Adam Oates. He was noticeably making head fakes and making decisions with the puck that he wasn't able to do when he came into the league. So not only was he getting you know more minutes and a bigger role with the team, he was getting better and better as a player skill-wise throughout that. So definitely unfortunate. I feel bad for him. I know exactly how he, how he feels in terms of not being able to stay healthy, and I wish him the best because he was a great player, and I think all the Bruins players will really miss him. Well said, buddy. Well said. Well, we've been going for, what, almost an hour and a half. We still haven't even gotten to the Seattle expansion list yet because there's been so much news. But first, we're going to go to Maroon and Killer. We do got to say that this interview is brought to you by our friends at Body Armor. Today's athletes deserve much more than your grandfather's tired, old, salty sports drink, which is full of artificial dyes at the Body Armor. Made with potassium-packed electrolytes, antioxidants, and B vitamins, plus no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes, Body Armor Sports Drink provides hard work and hydration and more, plus it tastes great. Body Armor helps today's athletes stay on top of their game, and it's also ideal for keeping slobs like myself hydrated during the summer months, and that's why I'm slugging a bunch of these blue raspberries every day. Body Armor is available for purchase in-store and on Amazon right now. Go to Drink Body Armor com for more information and boys i think we should send it over to the two stanley cup champions at tampa bay right now so without further ado pat maroon and alex Colon. well for the second year in a row we're lucky to have this pair of recurring guests on the show to once again discuss winning the stanley cup with the tampa bay lightning and this year we have the pleasure of having them both on at the same time thanks so much for joining us once again alex Colon and pat maroon congrats on the back-to-back -back cups boys thanks for having us Thanks, all right. Absolutely, Could've our pleasure. Better. Could have been better. <laughs> you guys sound great. <laughs> <laughs> where are you guys at right now? First off, Killer, where are you? I'm still in Tampa right now, yeah. Hanging out. So I'm in St. Louis, just sold my house. That's why I was looking at house hunting. That's why I'm a little delayed. Got a little cluster going on right now. So we got to let everybody know, Patty's going to be hopping off here in a few minutes because you had somebody drive your car from Tampa to St. Louis. You're two showtime now, three cups in a row. You don't drive your own vehicles. I was so hungover. That's a true story. I flew in my brother-in-law. We were supposed to drive home on Wednesday. And I woke up, packed a car, and I was so definitely hungover. I called this guy, Freddie Jenkins. that helps out the guys on the team a lot. I was like, is there any way you can help me out? And I packed it, parked at the rink, some 24-year-old pilot 
Drove my car down Saturday. I was, I got on a Southwest flight Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Packed my car. I was too hungover. So I you couldn't don't, do it. So so you're not driving to St. Louis, but on the other end, uh, I think for Game Five, your brother Phil. I guess there was no flights because of the Hurricane Elsa. Yeah, they got so, canceled. So so he so the whole family ended up driving down 15 hours in the midst of a hurricane to come see you when your third cup in a row. You're okay putting them uh, their lives at risk for if you're your third cup for the celebration or what? My brother will do anything to watch me play. So Lieutenant actually, my Dan, middle brother actually hey, got a flight to Orlando. It's like Lieutenant Dan and fucking Forrest Gump. Wow! on the way down to go celebrate the cup <laughs> i'd rather i would rather biz drive 15 hours than be on a southwest flight that's the incredible <laughs> thing just a cattle call to the back you know he had like the the e seating people yeah so you got this guy to drive your car up and now you're flying southwest back yeah class act patty ed boy yeah. Get a, what do you hey, want to do? hey, you uh, won you're three getting, Calder Cups in a row. Hey, <laughs> hey you, you, you got all these endorsement deals. You couldn't have got him a private uh, a private plane through Wheels Up or something. Because I was I talking have... to I was talking to Killer before this, and he said you might be the first player ever to mention a shaving razor ad in your first interview right after you guys won the cup. You've just hey. been raking it in. Hey. Shave logic, baby. <laughs> Patty, I, I'm just ho- hey, Patty. I'm just hoping with all these endorsements that you're going to be able to pay off some of the boys for the golf bets that we've had going oh, on. Here. So, oh, oh, I know. Oh. I already paid you. Yeah, hey, you, you're setting a record for most endorsements after winning hey, the cup. Killer, you count here's 10. Killer. Killer's like, oh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a two, but I'm playing on a six today, and he <laughs> rings off seventy four. Oh yeah. Patty, don't lie. There's a lot of people listening. Don't lie to everyone listening. I've never done that. Ever. I think that's that's a true statement. No, that's you dirty know. to do him like that, Patty. Oh, don't to say do he's a me six. like that, Patty. Hey, every, Patty, I have my uh, gin. We play off my gin every time. Don't start. Uh-oh, and now for the listeners home, Patty's gone. He's absolutely continually hung over. Like he said right, he was hung over two days. Oh, there he is. Boys, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, you look like you're on your entry level deal without the beard. Holy shit! Holy. <laughs> I look like you, no hair. <laughs> so I, I, I guess now that Patty's taken off for about ten minutes, we'll talk to Killer. Well, first things first, man. I guess like the main topic off the hop before we get into the Stanley Cup is you're you're not protected right now by Tampa. So if you want me to fucking send a message over to Ronnie, maybe maybe even a death threat if he picks you up to go to Seattle, uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to uh, yeah. we'll have to we'll have to give him a leg like yours. Yeah. Well, I, listen, I mean, I'm so happy in Tampa, obviously with, with, I talked with Julian yesterday and it was, I know he had a tough decision on who he was going to protect and who he wasn't going to protect. And um, unfortunately for us, there's like three really good forwards or there's more than three, but it seems like there's three that they're going to be looking at to pick. And um, you know, I think for myself, I'd be really unhappy if I left Tampa. I mean, I, I plan on retiring here. I really don't want to, to go to Seattle, but um you know what? We did win two cups here, so you know I don't know what else to say. I just wanted to, I guess, say that. I think the I think all-time once, power uh, move, Biz, the Spezza move, the power. Well, no, it's not. Remember the, when yeah, they yeah, chucked him on I'm waivers? Retire, yeah. <laughs> Spezza, yeah, I'm just gonna retire if you, anyone takes me on waivers, and and there you go. I think uh, I think once Yanni Gortz uh, took off his shirt during the the, the boat parade, <laughs> that sealed the deal. That guy's got like two percent body fat. What a mutant. Yeah, when he ate a turtle shell for lunch before the parade, swallowed it. <laughs> oh, let's let's talk about the, the festivities now. You guys didn't end up getting to do the onstage performance because it ended up getting rained out, but you still got to do a little bit of dock talk, jet skiing with the cup. What do you? So during the parade? Yeah, like well, the 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 the, the whatever when you when you go on stage afterward, it ended up getting yeah, rained yeah. out, right? It, it, it got rained out. It was terrible. We. Um... Well, that's when the whole fiasco with, with Patty, when he gets back on it, I'm sure he'll talk about it um, with the cup and everything. But um, we were like in a, we had the whole crowd waiting, a ton of people. I don't even know how many people. They were all outside. We're getting ready. Um, and they're like, you know, wait for the weather, wait for the weather. It's going to rain. It comes down hard. Um, and then there's a little bright spot where there's like 10 minutes where we can get out there and see the crowd. And it's going to come down right again after. And we're like, we got to go out there with the cup, show the crowd. So we went out there. It was like a thunderstorm, lightning everywhere. The police were like, you guys have to get out of here. It's like, it's very dangerous. There's lightning everywhere. Um, you guys got the cup. The fans were kind of trying to jump around the barriers. 
Um, so we didn't get to do the speeches and do that whole thing, but, um, you know, for safety reasons, we had to like get inside. It was a crazy storm, like a hurricane. So, um, but it was fun nonetheless. I mean, our owner was up there, his family was raining. It was unorganized cause it was raining so bad, but, um, yeah, that was right before Patty, you know, dropped Patty it or whatever. Ham. So, yeah. Everyone, but everyone was in the same position as Patty and it was so rainy. Like you can't, you can't blame them more. Uh, well, I have to ask you first, we'll go more into the celebration, but for you, I mean, second period game, one of the cup finals, you make an unreal play, block a shot from Petrie and you break your leg. Now I need to be kind of, um, told by you, like right away, did you know it was broken? You ended up getting a rod put in and, and this is yeah. also in the midst of, of, just in an unreal run by you, a point per game yeah. guy throughout the entire playoffs. Yeah. So take us through your mind and your body as that all went down. So during the actual play, I mean, I don't know if you remember, but Hedman lost his stick and he was, he needed a stick. And as a forward, you always want to get the D man stick because if there's a play down low, the D man has to have a stick because he's going to, he's more important than a winger. So I tried to hand it off to him like three times. It took him a while to get it. If you look at the replay, but um, I ended up blocking the shot. I knew it hurt. I knew it hit me pretty good. But as players, you always think, you know, whenever you get a shot off the foot, it, it always hurts. It never feels good. So then I keep playing and I'm like, you know, it doesn't feel great. But uh, in between periods, I don't want to take my boot off because, as you know, as a hockey player, once you take the boot off, if it's badly bruised, it's going to swell up. You're not going to be able to get your skate back on. So I get a toward all shot and be like, okay, hey, let's go out and play. And then once I got on for the third period, I knew because – I tried to take a shift. I couldn't, I couldn't push off my left foot, did the x-ray after, um, doctor told me it was, it was cracked. So that's, that's when I found out. And like you said, it was tough for me because I felt like I was playing oh. some of the best hockey of my life. And then in the Stanley cup finals against my hometown team, yeah. like a lot of people watching it. Yeah. It sucked. It, it was brutal. I know you said you wanted to play game six or seven. If you, if you needed to, were you actually medically cleared to play if necessary, those games? Yeah, I mean, I was medically cleared to play once I had the rod. In. It, okay. it, there was a rod in the bone, so the bone couldn't break anymore. I tried to play game four, which was stupid, but in my mind, I was like, the, the team could potentially win it tonight. I just got a rod put in my uh, fibula. I at least have to try this. Like, what am I going to – I just went through a surgery. I'm going to try it for a game, and we clinch. So I ended up – the problem was for game four, I skated in the morning and they had to shoot me up uh, to numb, to numb the leg. So I, that's the only way I could skate. And it actually felt really good in the morning. And I was like, Oh, there might be a chance here. And then during the game, they give you a Toradol, which it, it helps you kind of get through the game. So I thought I was going to be fine for game four, game four comes, they shoot up the, the ankle again. And there was just too much fluid from all the, the numbing agent that they had put in there and it just swole up and I couldn't even skate. So um, game four was not going to happen. Game five, it was even worse. But I thought legit, uh, realistically game six, for sure game seven. Um, game six, I was going to try to play. Now, when you say the rod got put in, was that something done to try to get you back quicker or was that just the surgery that needed to happen no matter what? No, it, it was only done to get... The doctors, I talked to probably 10, I had a sur two surgeons that came to my house like the day after and they're like, we would never recommend this to anyone, but if you want to play, this is the only way that you'll ever be allowed to play. And even if you get it, like, like five of the guys were like, you you're probably not going to play. Like, so you're just gonna have a rod in your leg. But I woke up the, the first night I was like, I'm not going to do the surgery. All these doctors are saying it's probably not the best idea. But then in my mind, I was like, if this thing goes to game seven and I don't even give myself a chance to play, like, I don't know if I'll be able to, to live with myself, you know? And then, and they also told me like the rod, you know, it's going to be in your fibula. It's not going to be like, it's not going to affect you long term. It's going to, it's going to be fine. So. Okay. So then that's what I kind of was wondering. So there's nothing that needs to be done now. There's not no, another surgery. No, no, no. It, okay. It, that's it was nice. Un, yeah. It was an unnecessary surgery, but I, it was needed to be done to play. Right. Hey, so I could have been good in five weeks or six weeks, just like resting it. No, you're like, uh, actually, um, for Seattle <laughs> listening, I got to get four more surgeries. Actually, uh, if Seattle's listening, my, yeah, yeah. my fibula is broken. I, I actually play. don't have a leg but, anymore. They chopped it off. The, the doctor, the doctor, I'm actually 
members with him or at the golf course, he's like, killer. I know like you don't need the rod, but if you get the rod in, you'll probably be able to play golf earlier in the summer too. You know? <laughs> Take some more money like, off Patty. Put it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. oh, that's unbelievable. Now, hey, let's talk about uh, the guy who was inserted for you, Joseph. I mean, he did a great job of coming yeah. in, made plays. As he as he continually got a regular shift, he fit right in. Like Joe is uh, is a really good player, and he's young and he's still finding his way. But when he when he's skating. He's really hard to stop. And I remember watch. I mean, watching games when you're not playing is so nerve wracking, especially when you, 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 you know, you're supposed to be involved. Get up my whole career. But, uh, yeah. So you get it. Um, but in the Stanley Cup final, it's a little different. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Matthew Joseph, I remember watching like every time they would flip a puck, he would outskate the Canadian D men and he would make it so hard on them. Uh, I thought he was huge part in, in the series for sure. And then ended up setting up Patty. Now, one thing I got to ask Patty when he gets back on, um, Wit Killer, I was getting a little bit of dirt on on what we were going to ask Patty, and he said when he came over for St. Louis, St. Louis was not a very superstitious team. Oh my god! But but, we, ten, we, but you guys are. Yeah. He said that you guys are one of the most superstitious teams, and he was carving them all. But yet, as time went on, Patty has now became one of the most superstitious guys on the team. Like what what yeah. are guys doing that are so crazy that he that blew so. his mind? If you bring Patty in right now, he will deny till he dies that he's the most superstitious <laughs> player. I was talking to Hedman right before this. I'm like, what can I say on Spit and Chicklet? Patty Maroon came in to the Lightning, and he was like, we had been the team that was always trying to win, and we couldn't find a way to win, and we got Pat Maroon, who had just won with the St. Louis Blues. And he, you know, he knew the way to do it, right? He had just won. He's like, you guys are so superstitious, man. Like, in St. Louis, we didn't do this shit. And he kept giving us crap because, like, our team, I mean, I don't know how other teams are, but we must be the most superstitious team in the NHL. Every guy, I mean, there's certain guys that sing a song in the, <laughs> in the bathroom before a game. Like, crazy Will you stuff. name names? No, I'm not going to name any names. What, what song? A, it's a bunch of different songs that all include different guys' names, and it's crazy. Honestly, like, when Savard got traded, we're like, hey, if you go in the bathroom at a certain time, like, there's going to be a song. There's, like, like six guys, like doing acapella in there it's really weird just like sorry it just they've been doing it for two years like don't worry about it but the thing was patty came in he had no no superstitions and now he's the most superstitious guy on the team he's yeah he's got like a, pl a plenty of things and i wish he was here so we could we could get his uh viewpoint he'll he'll deny it till they die it's oh, the dog days are over big pitch perfect yeah. fans yeah <laughs> okay, our, our no, race in there chatting with him it's doing his karaoke bit <laughs> And I think it all started because it, Marty St. Louis, who obviously was a captain and a big part of the franchise, was a very superstitious guy. And it kind of trickled down like Stammer and then other guys. And like Marty would do the exact same thing every minute. Every You knew you knew it was happening before the game. So um, maybe it trickled down from him. But it, it gets a little crazy, honestly. It's a, like a little weird. Well, uh, talk to us and, and everyone listening about um... – Kucherov's post game press conference, game five. Now, oh, how much man, time had man. he spent in the locker room? And, like, was it one of those things where he went in and you guys were like, I don't know what he's going to say right now? Because it's he's pretty clear he that is, he's a funny bastard. He's hilarious. Um, and, and when Kuch goes, he goes, if you know what I mean. Like, he, he picks his spots, but when he goes, he goes. And it's usually once or twice a year. Um, but me, Hedman, and Stammer were doing our press conference. And it was kind of tame. We were just talking about how great the team was and like how the team may not be together next year and kind of just going over things. And Cooch just came in and was tossing Bud Lights at us, like at our heads. Um, and we were, I was a little worried because it was supposed to be Cooch, someone else and someone else, but it was only Cooch with his shirt off. So I was like, are we, should we just leave him here to do his own media? Like he's a little tuned up. He's feeling good. And, we were like, whatever, we got to go hang out with the cup, you know? So we left him in there and uh, you know what? He went off a little bit, <laughs> as you guys know, he's a pretty funny guy. I think some people, especially me being from Montreal, I think a lot of people, you know, didn't take it the right way and thought he was disrespecting the Montreal Canadiens. And he definitely wasn't doing that. I think there was a lot of fans he would have talked the same about. The Islanders fans were, Probably worse than the Montreal Canadiens fans, honestly, with the antics yeah, that they were the doing. Worst. Yeah, so you know, but 
he was just, you know, in that moment, he kind of gave it to them. And, you know, I thought it was, it was kind of funny. Well, I'm sure another reason you don't want to get picked up by Seattle is you've kind of became Mr. Tampa. You rep all the other sports teams, of course, Tampa Bay, uh, the Buccaneers, as well as the Rays. And then you ended up having that video that came out with Gronk. Now, how, yeah. how was that on ice session with him? And I think that he has a bit of a hockey background I was reading up on. Yeah, so, and th- that's what I love about Tampa. It's it's such a small town feel. Yeah, but, killer. Oh, oh here geez, here we go. <laughs> you, want, you want me to finish this? Yeah, 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 yeah f- finish okay. that, and we're going to go so, back to Patty about what we were chirping about earlier. Like, yeah, so like you said before, me being in Tampa, I've been here for nine years. Uh, I plan on retiring here when I'm done playing and then when you talk about Gronk like it's such a small town we know his manager is his manager goes hey he wants to come skate with you guys okay come out we skate uh it was a fun time and if you Patty Patty was on the ice we were shooting on him and we were actually we were all so worried because he put on Vasilevsky's gear and uh he didn't put on any of the like for his legs and knees he didn't put on anything so you could see his skin um and me and Stan were taking one tease and we were so worried that if, if he like went the wrong way and we caught the inside of his knee and uh, you know, he had to miss time if for one of us taking a one time run, we were really worried about that, but he was actually pretty good in that. I mean, that guy is the most down to earth, big time celebrity you'll ever meet uh, in your life. Just a big kid, doesn't care, has fun. Come talk to anyone. Great guy. How were his on ice abilities? I think he, he hit Patty pretty good one time. He had trouble getting on the skates. He was a little bit back and forth. Like, uh, but, he, you know, he grew up playing hockey. His brothers were actually pretty decent too. Patty, we were talking about how you became the most superstitious player on the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's after embarrassing, tripping. Patty. Yeah, we're what against that. Embarrassing. Holy fuck. First you used off, to just that's, drink. <laughs> that's false. I am not superstitious at all. By he said means. this is how it would go down, that you'd deny it, and it's all true. I am not. Great. I think who the biggest one is Hedman and Point, I would say. And Stammer. Uh, Patty, you're, <laughs> you're, you've become the most superstitious guy on the team. You put your stick in the garbage every game. You tell, he has, a, he has a, a ritual with Sorelli where he tells him how to tie his knee brace even though they do it every single game. He goes, no, no, you got to tie it a little bit tighter here. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> what about that? What about when you – I mean, I could go on for days. Uh, hey, the the evidence team. is damning. If it makes my <laughs> – if it makes my teammates better, then I'm, <laughs> for it. I'm 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 assuming next you're going to deny that Chub Club ever existed with Coop back in the in the St. Louis days, and then I'm assuming you're going to deny denting the cup as well. Uh, well, Chub Club happened, and from a PR standpoint, I got told I cannot talk about it unless I would tell you. I'm sure you already heard. I I didn't hear how it got dented. That? I know, but I I can't talk about it anymore. I what are you going court. to fucking court about it? <laughs> hey, the, uh, that's what I got told. So I don't know. All right, oh, all right. Boys. The cup, the cup well, has. Uh, can I say something? Me and sure. Patty, me, Patty, and Ryan McDonough were supposed to go on the Jimmy Fallon show, and the cup broke, and we we couldn't go after that. So oh, I was like, wow, goodness. Oh, that's we a had a trip to New York. Day. You would. How many more Instagram followers would you have picked up after that? Yeah, okay. probably like you know a couple. Patty could have got uh, another yeah. Razor deal. It would have been great. Killer's uh, been on for like 20 years. I'm catching up. I, I, I gotta, <laughs> Patty, I got to ask you one thing. Apparently, you had something planned for when everybody was going to go on stage, but that ended up getting canceled. So you were going to up last year's performance when you had no shirt on. You had the bougie scarf with the silly uh, fedora hat. What did you have planned this year? Can you talk about what you were going to do considering you couldn't do it? Or are you going to wait till you do a fourth cup in a row to, to do it? Uh... No, I mean, I wasn't – I know Cooch was going to say something hysterical. I know that. I know he was going to go off the rails and say something funny. But I was going to – I mean, I, I'm going to wait until I win it again because it, okay. like it was supposed to be like a really unique situation where everyone's going to be like their jaw dropping. So if I say it, it won't even be fun, funny. I think yeah, it, it has okay, to be like, – I hear you. I would have to be in the moment and understand, and then the pictures go viral. Then you guys make me go viral because that's what you guys do. Okay. All right. (laughs) Just like pee in the pants situation. (laughs) Allegedly. 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 Which I did not. Obviously, you guys know beer goes down. Yeah, sound. 
<laughs> I, want, I want to go back to the three-peat that Biz mentioned. You're the first player to three-peat since the Islanders dynasty back in the 80s. Just the fourth ever player to win three cups in a row with two different teams and the first ever in the expansion era. You're going to be going for four in a row next year, assuming Seattle doesn't pick you up. This is, must be way beyond any wildest dreams you've ever had, no? Yeah, I mean, it's all right. It's been remarkable. Uh, I've been blessed. Obviously, the first one went in my hometown. That was pretty much, you know, you, th- you thought it was done. And then you go to a dynasty like Tampa. And, you know, I thought we were arguably the best team the last two years. And it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch the guys grow, you know, play the right way. And uh, I've been lucky enough to find a role and, you know, use it as an advantage and be part of history with, you know, two great organizations. And, you know, it takes it, you know, 25 guys to win a Stanley cup and, you know, it takes a good hockey team. And I've been fortunate to play for two great organizations the last three years and uh, can't thank my teammates enough without them. I don't think we, you know, I raised the cup. So uh, it's been honestly, all right. I'm still like soaking it all in. It's kind of fucking crazy that like you sit back and you're like, you're three times Stanley Cup champ, but you're three times in a row. It's not like you won it over a span of your career. And to think about some people don't even get the chance to win or even go to the Stanley Cup finals. So like I said, it, it all starts with teammates and organization first. So, uh, you know, I've been blessed in that sense. Are you running out of places to take the cup? <laughs> seriously um uh, well last year we didn't get one so i'm like i'm hoping the nhl hears this i think we should get two days in a row i think that's bullshit if we don't that's he got opinion. his last night i saw yeah but Deuces. he only won one so he gets one day <laughs> <laughs> hey there's not enough there's not enough time it's gotta yeah go that's true and next season starts in two weeks so <laughs> I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> Patty, bring it let, bring it to the box. <laughs> bring, bring, it to the, in a week. bring it to the boxing club where, where Cam Jansen was knocking out kids from the USHL. <laughs> if I did, the cup would get dented again. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, what what do guys in the locker room make of uh, Patty clucking like a chicken in round one against the Florida Panthers? Like, do you guys have a, a good chuckle at all these silly things he's doing on the ice? Uh, I mean, I don't I don't usually see them until like you guys post it, honestly. A lot of times you don't see it during the game. I mean, I loved, I loved uh, when in the finals when uh, Anderson was kind of running around. And I know Anderson; he's a great guy. But Patty came in and kind of gave him the business, and there was a mic'd up version. And I think that's a big reason why we brought Patty, or not we brought, but the Lightning brought Patty on the on the team is he brings a toughness and he's he's a good locker room guy. And then uh, you know he, he definitely has a presence on the ice of the locker room and. He's a huge reason why we, we won two cups in a row. And I think uh, all of his teammates love him. It's a, it's a huge part of who he is. Can you talk to us about how that Coleman just scores full blown highlight real goals? Like that guy is just, he's so clutch that whole line, okay. you know, everyone's talked about him, but what a player he was. Did you guys know anything about him when he was brought in last year? Uh, I, I played with him in Jersey. Oh no shit. I forgot about that. I forgot you were even in Jersey. You were so fucking invisible Check on the that game. game. notes, bud. <laughs> I didn't case, do shit but... in Jersey Biz. No, he's a hell of a player. He played man. four he's playoff games against us. <laughs> oh my God. Is this the Patty Maroon roast? I know. It's got three okay, I can take it so Biz. Put some respect on your name for crap. Hey, you know who else isn't giving you respect? That who? fucking that Islanders fan at the Coliseum after game six. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, had, he had the fucking. <laughs> You had the finger right in your grill coming off the ice, but you got the last laugh, eh, Patty? <laughs> anything, you, anything you want to say to him right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give him the fucking bird because he gave it back to me, but I'd love to shove my bird right up his ass. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, but going back to, to what Killer said and the fact that they brought you in for your physicality, I mean, we saw it, of course, in that first playoff run with Tampa, but this year it seemed like more than ever, especially that first series against florida there were a few situations and and even going back to that islander series like maddie martin's a tough customer and you guys had some pretty good fucking battles yeah yeah because you know i'm just obviously i'm not you know i just kind of take my role on and just try to stick up for my teammates and try to make them you know a little bigger you know when they go out nice you know if our team's a little bigger and they feel like you know they can chirp back 
you know, chirp back tough guys, knowing they have someone on the bench that will respond, you know, that, that makes a huge, huge difference. And I think our team plays bigger. They play better that way and they're not playing scared. So, uh, you know, I just try to do my job. You know, I'm, it's not the Connor McDavid days, but, you know, three cups later, I'll be okay. <laughs> Patty, we had Coop on last week. Obviously, you go way back with him. He shared his incredible journey with us. What makes him such a special coach? You've been under him for so long. I think, I think just his swagger. I think how he says timely things at the right time. He has great speeches. Uh, he, he motivates the guys. He gets the guys going. Um, you know, he's a player's coach. You know, he's he's good talker. He knows how to talk one-on-one. Um, but, yeah, I just, for me, you know, this year, something, you know, just popped up. It was just, just how we wanted last year was just a, 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 just a unique way with COVID, no fans. And, like, the way he said this year is, like, we have an opportunity, you know, to run it back. We have a full team, basically, and, um, you know, we have a chance to win it with fans in the stands this year and, and, you know, we can be part of greatness and, you know, we, we didn't have our cup days and he just remind us. And I think that's what kind of motivated our, the boys and uh, the way he said things. And I think you just kind of repeat itself in your head. You're like, shit, we didn't get a cup day. Like we didn't get a regular cup season, you know, like we had a parade. Yeah. But like, it wasn't normal. So uh, the way he said things, you know, timely situations and the way he motivated us. I, and I think that's why he's such a great coach in this league and he's only going to get better. Right. You know, now he's a winner, a true winner. And, um, you know, the boys play hard for him and that's, that's a good sign. Killer. We, uh, we mentioned, we talked to Coop and, and he brought up your name in, in that the year you finished at Harvard, you came over and that stack team in Norfolk won the yeah. Calder cup. It included Palat, you Tyler Johnson and, I mean, you must have seen right away he was a good coach, but did you have any idea how good, like, Palat and these other guys were that went on to be these two-time Stanley Cup champs with you? No, I don't. I mean, I don't think any of us – when you're in the AHL, you're just trying to get to the NHL. You're not even thinking about being a cup champion, let alone a two-time Stanley Cup champion. Um, yeah. I know for myself, when I left Harvard, I was lucky because Tampa had, like, six or maybe four guys that were up with the Lightning – um, not in Norfolk. So I had a chance to play right away, luckily played and, and we won. But um, if you asked any of those guys, I mean, even Patty, I know when he was playing and he's played in Norfolk and Adirondack too, you're not really thinking about, am I going to be a cup champion or, or anything like that? It's just, how do I get to the next level? And, and how do I become an NHL player? How do I become a, a stable NHL player? Um, but you could tell guys like Tyler Johnson was a stud. Like he was MVP star Palat was a guy who no one knew about, but he's his development. He grew so much and every year he's gotten so just better, 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 better. And you look at him now, he's one of the best players in the NHL. Like, um, so, you know, but yeah, like I said, no one would have thought back then, um, that we'd be doing what we're doing now. Any special plans with the cup this year that you weren't able to do last time? Well, the tough part for me is like Patty, restrictions are completely lifted i'm sure in st louis but montreal and canada it's, it's kind of still up in the air so it would suck to have two times where i couldn't really celebrate the cup properly with my family we're trying to f- figure it out it's just you're at the whims of the government like they're they have dates and plans and gatherings of a certain amount of people where you can have 50 people outside and i'm like 50 people like it's not my family's more than 50 people i gotta invite a lot more than that but you know what in the end, you got to make the most of what you have, and uh, hopefully we can do something fun for everyone. And the, the cup days, you asked Patty, it's not really about you. I've been with the cup the past, you know, two weeks partying with it. It's more about the people, your coaches that you grew up with, your family, people that helped you along the way. You want to you want to celebrate them, so you want them to be a part of it. I just want to go back to the injury real quick. It, it sounds like you've had injuries that hurt much more than a broken fibula, no? <laughs> well, I mean, the way you described it earlier. No, I mean, it sucked, man. I couldn't walk. I mean, ask Patty. I was, I wasn't with the team. Everyone said I traveled. I wasn't with the team in Montreal. I was staying back and I was rehabbing it. I couldn't make the flight because my surgery was that morning. Um, it sucked. I couldn't walk, but whenever you can, like, when once you numb it up, you get like a little bit of hope, and you're like, well, you know, maybe I can play with this thing. And then you're like, but I'm gonna have to play against Shea Weber. Like, am I gonna be able to do that? You know, I don't want to. 
I don't want to go out there and hurt the team. Like in the Stanley cup finals, the team's playing pretty well. Like I don't want to go out there and be, you know, that guy. So, you know, it was a really tough week and a half for me to figure out whether I was going to do the surgery. And then once I got it, if I was going to play or not, but yeah, it, it, it didn't feel good. I don't I mean, want to. Pretty, I'll speak on that though. Like oh. when he got surgery and he's like, everyone's like, Oh, killer's going to play. We're like, Holy shit. This would be fucking unreal. And then he meets us in Montreal for game four morning skate. He's ripping around. I'm like, there's <laughs> no fucking way. It was just cool to see like, you know, him taking warm ups and like him out there, like literally trying everything he can to play. And I, I feel like that's why, like, our team was going to win just with guys like that and like McDonough playing with a broken freaking um, hand, you know, Cooch broken rib. But I mean, like, with Killer, I mean, that was fucking unreal to like see. And it just motivated the guys even more. I mean, the guy just put a freaking metal rod in his ankle. And he's skating three days later, a day later. Like and we got, we got RA trying to downplay it over here. <laughs> yeah, like no, no. He said he, he said it, it just felt like a ding earlier, almost like he was, you know, gonna go back up and shoot it up. Didn't seem it, like it hurt his back. Well, it makes sense First, why the GM was getting emotional talking about it because it was even as the, as you're saying, Patty. Other guys are so appreciative, and it just shows what it takes. It's it's a great story. I mean, it really is, and I think Killer was having an unreal playoff too. Like he was arguably one of our best forwards too all playoffs and then to see a guy go down like that game one and then see a guy try to come back in a metal rod in his freaking ankle, you know, on game three flies there for game four, morning skates, pregame skates. I mean, it was just, it was pretty cool to see. And I feel like that's why the boys were going to battle through this and win. You know, Keller is a huge loss too. You talk about all these players battling through injuries. I mean, you just mentioned the broken leg, McDonough's broken hand, but I heard actually the the biggest injury that hasn't been talked about during playoffs was the the fact that you got a spider bite, Patty Maroon, and <laughs> and, and, and and I did not see that one coming. To, to the point where these guys with broken oh, legs and broken hands could, couldn't even get the attention guess, of the hey, doctors. Still black and blue. <laughs> Patty, before Look you at bring that. it up, I'm still scarred. <laughs> hey, to the yeah. point where they didn't know if you were going to be able to play or not. No, I was scared out of my mind. <laughs> who texted get... you that? I just need to know who hey. texted you. Hattie or Stammer? Much fun. <laughs> I'll let you hop in, killer. Yeah. Is it true? Like, I wasn't in the room. Obviously, I wasn't in the room for the last couple games, but I heard you got a Toradol shot legitimately <laughs> for the final <laughs> And, like, you – no, no, no. Not only that, Patty. But like Mac was like my hands, he was trying to talk to the doctor about his broken hand and Goody had the broken hand and you like kind of just push him to the side and like, hey, I got this spider bite, like I can't play and you got a cord all shot. I don't know. You let me know. You did no, get a uh, tornado shot. I did a tornado shot. They're either, Doc, the can I get a shot? No, we just we just got our last one on Patty like, for a spider bite. There's a daddy long leg spider. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> McDonough can't play. We gave all the Toradol shots away. Sorry, Patty. Didn't work spider oh, bite. my God. Oh, my. Yeah, honestly, it, the spider bite turned into a superstition, though, because Hetty would come in. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty fucked up. So I came in. McDonough was talking, and I was like, Doc, I got a spider bite. It was blowing. It, like, literally blew up like a balloon. And I was freaking out. <laughs> but I did not get a tour at all because of that. My knee and back were hurting. So, but, yeah, Can't we did say I got it for the spider bite. Oh, fuck. That's fucking funny, though. <laughs> hey, go, hey, going back to Cooch, I mean, he, he's he's still pretty Russian. Is there guys in the team, like, when they get called up, he has no clue what their names are? And, and, like, and like Evgeny Malkin calls them by their number? Who, Cooch? Yeah, Cooch. He probably just won't talk to him. <laughs> yeah, like that Malcolm, is sick. Cooch's yeah. English is perfect. No, Malcolm. Oh, he's man. not. He's not as bad as Mal. I don't I mean. I, you guys told me this. I heard the story about Malkin. Cooch, Cooch knows guys' names and stuff. I mean, there was one guy. There was one black ace. Remember Patty, who was like attached. He he said him and Cooch were a package deal, and they would oh. skate when Cooch was hurt every oh. day. And we did the test. <laughs> we did the test on on the cup. When we had the dinner, we're like, Cooch, come sit down here. And this guy, Walcott, had sitting, uh, had skated with Cooch for like, what is it, 40 days or something? We're like, Cooch, what's this guy's name? And he got it, Daniel Walcott. Okay, all right, there you go. There you so, go. Yeah. 
Hey, how, hey, uh, on a serious note, did Cooch really not know who I was? Because that was one of the more embarrassing moments uh, of my uh, of my life, Patty. I felt like an absolute fucking. Uh, I feel like he did know who you were. He. he I think he just know. said that. I think he just said that. Yeah. Okay, so go, I, I love just like the, still not just for like sure, the Flurry thing. He knew who Flurry was. I think he his he was just he was like that guy in Vegas. That guy he was just, waffled. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was awful too. I, I think one of the craziest stats was the fact in these two runs that you guys didn't lose back to back. Going at the fact that you guys had all these superstitions, w- would you guys mention it in the room before the next game? Like, was it something that was talked about, or 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 did you guys just completely let it fly under the radar? What, like the fact you- that you guys had never lost back to back games? So, at, following a loss, would you guys in the locker room before the next game? Would you guys mention it at all? Would there be any talks about it? Right before I don't think so, killer. We never. I remember about one it. time. I remember one time it got brought up. It was, uh, I think it was game six. We lost against the Islanders, and I think Stammer came to the locker room and goes, "Don't worry, boys. We never lose two in a row." That's the only time I remember hearing it. I don't know if you remember that at all. Well, yeah, you, well we talked earlier, um, or maybe it was with Coop. I think about how two times you guys spoke as a team about how the team was going to be broken up. Um, yeah. Was that, you know, before the playoffs, in the middle? How did that all go about, like, the second time it was brought up, especially? You can take it, Patty. Well, I, I could – go ahead. You know, you know, Patty's like, we're you know, battling through injuries. He's like, I got a, a fucking daddy spider long, bite. There's a fucking tarantula <laughs> in my neighborhood. I, for, I forget which game it was, but um, it was in the Islander series. And I think it was a couple – the guys, we just had a team. Like, I think the, every day we have our meetings, like oh, our by PK. You remember? About you, that. Do you want to talk about it? Or do you no, not want to talk about it? No, I just didn't hear him. I'm cutting out. I didn't hear you him. You talk about it. I feel like I've been talking about it. And you, you talk. Oh, so we had a – I was talking to Mack Truck, and I think Mack Truck kind of went back and talked to Stammer. It was on the plane, I remember. I went back to the bathroom, and Mack Truck was talking to Stammer, and but me and Mac were talking that night, just hanging out and just kind of figuring out what we need. And I think we just, we didn't need anything like no video, no nothing. We just needed like a, a man to man conversation about like, listen, this team's not going to be together next year, kind of. And like, this is once in a lifetime kind of opportunity for all of us. So like, let's take this by the balls and kind of use that as fuel for everyone because we can make history. And, uh, you know, Mac Truck spoke up, but I think what Stammer said was uh, he pretty much hit all the topics. I don't remember what he said, Killer Kamari say, but like it was pretty, it was pretty cool to see it. You know, like everyone kind of talk, especially once your captain talks and Mac Truck talks. It was pretty cool. So that's how it kind of all started. Mac Truck kind of got Stammer on board, and then they went to Coop and. Um, yeah, we had a players' own meeting before Game Seven against Long Island. Pat, you guys mentioned the Islanders a minute ago. Was the only time you guys maybe shit your pants a little bit uh, during Game Seven versus them, where it was such a, a tight game? That was basically the the finals right there. No disrespect to Montreal, but they gave you a, the toughest punch you guys took. Yeah, I, I I was I woke up from my nap pretty nervous. I'll tell you that. I think I mean people forget we won on a, a you know PK goal, so. We won one nothing. I mean, that game could have won either way. I mean, we could have won zero zero in overtime. Long Island could have scored, but um, you know, I think that was the best series that I played in that this you know this playoffs. They were good. Uh, Long Island was very good. You know, I th- I thought their goalie was really good too, and you know, top players were going head to head, and uh, it was pretty fun to watch. And uh, all they rolled all four lines. We were rolling all four lines, so it was a good battle. Um, yeah, I would say that was the most nervous I've been in a long time about a playoff series. And I didn't have any of those moments, you know, the past two years. Did you guys notice it smelling like cigarettes and beer in game six at the Coliseum? And what was that experience like playing in that arena, especially with the fans? That was, that was as as close to a soccer stadium as you're going to see in the NHL. For sure. That place was awesome. The best part is like, when they get the puck roaming, like Barzell's doing like 10 circles in, <laughs> in the ozone, the, I don't know what they say. They just fucking chant the whole time. It's just like, and I was out there one time. I got the puck. I was just hearing that noise. I was shaking him. My hands were shaking. I was like, get the fucking <laughs> puck out. Get the puck out. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, 
I mean, it's pretty loud in there, and it makes you kind of nervous. And you wonder why they win home games. You know what I mean? You wonder why, like, they're really good at home. And, I mean, it was – I mean, Killer can talk about it too. I mean, it was it was fucking very loud in there. Very loud. It's probably the loudest building. Carolina was loud, but Long Island was pretty loud. Yeah, I mean, Carolina – when I think about uh, – sorry, the Islanders, like, how many fans do they get there? It's like – Thirteen or fourteen thousand or something. Yeah, Either way, many. there's not that many. It's such a. It, it feels like when you would play like, like in when we used to play, and people would be like, "What?" Like Cornell was such a hard place to play in college because the fans were like right on top of you. When you go to these big stadiums, sometimes the fans could get lost in, in on the in the on the island. The fans are right on top of you. They're chanting all the time. Every single one is giving you the double middle fingers. It doesn't matter if they're like three years old to 80. Everyone's giving the middle, the double middle fingers. Uh, they're passionate. I remember when they would win, they would, they would remember with the pickup trucks, Patty, there was like three people in pickup trucks just following us back to our hotel. I'm like, God, these guys are in the state now. Yeah. <laughs> like a businessman would just pull up. Like he had a suit on businessman and he would be like, he would look over. He would see it was a lightning, get a suit on. Middle finger, it's like God, it's like someone's dad. <laughs> it's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre scene where they're chasing the guy down oh with the bright God. lights, little little he, high beam flash. Yeah, yeah. Was, we were at we were at. Uh, I don't know if I. Well, I guess I can say it because we were allowed to go to dinner, but we had like a team dinner, and uh, these kids were hanging outside, <laughs> just chirping us, like, chirping us. Giving it to us like Long Island fans, like chirping it. Hey, we'll get the key. Sorry. The guys forgot. The guys that drove my car <laughs> took my key so the Uber driver had to drive it back. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Good thing Did you guys have yeah, these little are, and This little kid came up to me. He goes, hey, bud. Do you want to? He goes, hey, bud, will you sign this for me? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> They're like chirping us like Long Island kids. It's fucking. Who I was like, Kucherov? Was that Kucherov? Kucherov? Was like, Kucherov? <laughs> you, 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 uh, his name's Frank and his last name's Borelli. Yeah. You'd have to have uh, people uh, testing your food before you ate it. Guys dying left and right. PR guys <laughs> sacrificing themselves. Jesus. <laughs> I, but I they can't... loved us in that restaurant, Patty. They were good to us. They did love us in that restaurant. When are we getting this golf game going, though? Oh, I don't oh, know. This is going to be excellent. Sandbag. Although, fuck. Because I'm knows? like Biz, and Killer's going to beat you for sure. Yeah, well, if, especially if he says he's a six fucking handicap, like you're trying to say. Hey, he's hey, they're saying. Wait, yeah. don't listen to that story. Patty, there's a lot of people <laughs> listening. They're going to think I'm a sandbagger for real now. I'll show yeah, you my Patty. Gym. I'll Patty. play on one leg. No, he's I'll a stick. He's a plus two. I'm not All a right, plus perfect. two. Perfect, so now I get shots off him. He's I get shots now. No, I'm hey, not a plus two. Killer's going to two. Killer's gonna have the the Conor McGregor cart out there, <laughs> just 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 hitting it off the cart. Hey, so uh, Patty, going going back to some of these endorsements though, I think you have a you have a hairline product coming out, and I know you oh, messaged yeah. me what? about it. I would yes. love to collaborate on a commercial to to pop this thing off. We are we're we're popping it off, so we're dropping later this week or next week. It's called Letty Dressing. Uh, this kid that is from Minnesota, he's like a TikTok star. He's the one that started like the, the frozen tarps and his TikTok is getting like millions of views. So he reached out to me and he's like, Hey, I have this good idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but all my boys play in the North American hockey league. I'm just a golfer at UT. So he goes to university of Tampa. Um, so yeah, we're dropping. I, it's good. I heard it's as of right now, I heard it's unbelievable product. I'm getting it in this week. It, and he's been using his boys been using it and uh is it gel or like conditioner gel, what is it it's most it's it's <laughs> la no. look style it's shampoo conditioning and uh gel for your hair so like um pomade like product so i'm a dab of den man so we have we have a bunch coming and we're gonna drop it and this thing's gonna blow up so um letty dressing I think you guys, I'm going to send, I just sent Grinelli some. So oh, once Jesus. I get, once we start dropping it, I think I need you guys to do a little plug for me. So uh, I'm going to have to pay <laughs> you guys a sponsor. Maybe you can could... send us an Uber X down to drive us. We'll, we'll come <laughs> to St. Louis. You hey. can fly us home. Fucking. I, I yeah, it's more... going to be good though. I can, uh, 
you can you can put some of that hair there wet yeah, what exactly. about what about ra i don't you got the uh, bald <laughs> yeah. shine ra yeah, can crank it with it <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna invent some uh bald shiny for ra yeah, I don't think I need it today. Killer, I got one more for you. At what point during game five, we're talking about superstitions and how you have a superstitious group. At what point during game five, do you decide to suit up so you can take the lap with the cup without wanting to jinx anything? Yeah. So, good question. Yeah. I always wanted question. to know this. Some, I always wanted to know this. Nice yeah, little bounce people, back from the fake injury that Killorn was people, bitching about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, people would, I'm sure, would, would want to know this because all the black aces and everyone gets was on the ice right when we won. But people don't realize we lost uh, in game four in, in overtime. So we were all dressed in the locker room, ready to go. And there's actually a funny story last year when all the boys, um, they didn't have another room and they had to go in the shower because we were coming in pissed off against Dallas when Corey Perry scored that goal when we could have clinched. But they were all waiting in the showers and they had to wait for us to all get, all get undressed um, last year. But this year, um, I was in the, the coach's room watching – um, I didn't want to get dressed till I knew it was like whatever. So I waited till overtime and then in overtime I got dressed. Um, they scored. We went back for game five and I must've got dressed in the last probably two minutes. Cause I, I wanted to be there with the guys. I didn't want to jinx it, but I had to be, I wanted to be there when it all happened. So probably maybe two minutes is a little bit, not enough time, but you know, there's a six minute TV timeout or is it? Yeah. Six minutes. After that six minute TV timeout, I grabbed my stuff and I was like, you gotta, we gotta go here. So, but yeah, it's nerve wracking. You don't want to put any bad. Where do you guys sit? The question though, where's, where do you guys sit actually? Like TV, like, is there a TV in the locker or do you guys go back into the locker room and watch? I was watching it with, with Lambert in the training room. The black aces were upstairs. Um, We all like kind of watched in different spots. Yeah. And then we just went to to the ice, yeah, and we watched like the last thirty seconds or whatever. Killer, you mentioned jokingly the season starts in two weeks. It is a quick turnaround, and yeah. for guys, you two going on long stretches. Now, granted, you're battling an injury, but when do you start like working out or skating again? It's got to be like at least a month off, or how do you approach this? I mean, I'll, I'll give you my answer, then Patty can give you his. I mean, <laughs> you? No, I didn't mean training, it like that. but uh, you have to take time away you have to clear your mind i don't care i personally enjoy like working out i can't just sit at home i golf but you got to get away from the game you have to clear your mind the seasons are too much of a grind you have to get away from it so for me i won't like think about well i I enjoy working out but in terms of like picking up a hockey stick and skating i don't know when i'm going to do that it's going to be probably when does the season start october when is the camp, camp starts? What September twentieth, twenty third. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. End of August, like middle of August. I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. So, but I mean, everyone's different. Some guys like Kucherov will be on the ice next week because some guys like some guys don't want to get away from it. Some guys like to always feel the puck and kind of see things. And then some guys need more time. Like you know, it's just different from guy to guy. And Patty probably is different than me. Yeah, well, for me, I'm starting tomorrow working out, but I won't skate until like September first. <laughs> yes, Sam. Uh, but, but, but no, but no, but, but no, but on a serious note, w- a wit to kind of fall off your being thing serious, is. Serious. My wife is laughing at me right next to me. She's like, "You are going to the gym. You're getting, you know, like it's time." Yeah, to you're going up. to one of those executive workouts: sauna, stretch, sauna. yeah, sit on the bike for two seconds. You, you yeah, know, I, I think you guys have played eight playoff rounds in the last 10 months. So this is even yeah. a little bit more abnormal than usual because of the because of the whole uh, quarantine and COVID situation. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. been a grind, man. Like, it's crazy to think about how many playoff games and how many games we actually played the last two years and every other day. Like, every other you day. know, like whole playoffs. Season. Like, we were playing back-to-backs in the COVID rules, like, in the bubble during the playoff. Like, game seven, we're playing back-to-backs. I mean, that's unheard of. Crazy. So, I think – I mean, it's just crazy. Like Killer said, though, we need our time away from the rink. I think guys need to get their body moving for sure. Like, guys will go into the gym, like you said, wet, do the fake sauna stretch, get away from their old ladies kind of deal. 
Hey, <laughs> <Well, laughs> Pat- on for four hours. Patty, another th- another thing that ended up going viral too, I got to mention is the uh, Hannah Hill. She ended up uh, putting on that bathing suit that had the hairy chest on oh, it with the big pancake just, nipples. I was dying. And, and, I was and she, dying. she dressed up exactly like you. I don't know how many people who are listening have social media, but she she pretty much nailed it. And then there was a shot of you looking at her where you were like, "Yeah, that's a fan right there." Yeah, I was dying. I was pe- me and McDonough were dying laughing. We we're like peeing ourselves. That was hysterical. Again, we threw her a beer. Second. We threw her a beer. That was that was like Patty. You got to send them the video of how many times people threw you beer and you missed in a matter of a minute. That's a funny. Oh, that'll be a hilarious video. That's a good one. <laughs> he thought he was an islander for a minute. <laughs> oh, I'll send it to I'll send it to the boys. Yeah, that's a like good that one. Video. That's Any a really um, video. before we let you guys go, well, we, we've asked about so many players, but I love that Sergachev. Any funny stories about that guy? Is he quiet in the room or is he a clown? He's funny. He's a good yeah. kid. Sergey, honestly, he's since he's got traded, he has grown so much, not only like on the ice, off the ice, he's matured a lot. Um, and I think it shows in the way that he, he plays. I mean, he's becoming one of the best defensemen in the NHL. And I mean, listen, there's a lot of good players in the NHL. I don't say that lightly, but he, he can shoot the puck. Um, he's, he's strong on the puck. He's hard to play against. And you think about on any other team, he's probably on the first power play. He's just got the best defenseman in front of him, which um, which is also good because he gets to learn from Hetty. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's become so good. I mean, every day you get to see how Hetty plays, how Hetty practices, how he does certain things. And Hetty is really, you know, I don't want to say his, he's the guy he looks to for a lot of things. I mean, role model, I guess you can call it. Um, and I think Hetty t- embraces that role and he's brought him along for the ride for sure. Um, one last thing, Patty, I got to let you know, the boys on the, the team were bitching a little bit F- uh, from now on, maybe uh, AirPods on the bus when you're doing your FaceTime calls, because they know what time <laughs> your kid has to get to bed and they know how much your house is worth. No, you're the guy that just has the volume ripping to everyone in the airport, dude. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Patty. What is this, a roast Patty day? What the fuck's going on? No, Patty, we love you. But when you do your cameos, Hey, Tyler, happy birthday. It's Pat Maroon from... Uh, He's doing Maroon. cameos on the bus? On the bus, yelling. <laughs> like, okay, man, just wait till you get the hotel, man. Like, come on. Hey, Dude, that's forty nine ninety nine, guys. I'm doing it. Stop. <laughs> hey, that's what gets the boys going, though. See, I got you a last. Too Patty. tight. You're too tight. Hey, three Patty's in a row, Patty. Three in a row, Three baby. in a row. What were you saying, killer? Best self-promoter in the league. Look at you, man. More people probably know about Pat Maroon than certain players. You're, you do a good job. We've heard rumblings about the high-end Russian players getting this uh, Vladimir Putin credit card, where it's like basically like, hey, if you get a night out with the Russian boys, you're allowed to swipe it. Have you guys heard any rumblings of that? No, no the only I thing not. I ever heard of, like what Cooch said in the summer, he takes like a, a Bentley into a club. Him and oh Malkin, my like they, they roll into this club, they rent a Bentley, yeah. And that like like that's her that's her seat. Like just roll off in the club and they just that's party. A table. That, that's a table. <laughs> they got the suicide doors and they just open it up yeah, and then that's what they go with. <laughs> you pay extra and the, the club has these huge doors and you go in on like a convertible Bentley or whatever. And that becomes your table. You just roll into the middle of the dance floor. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. the most ru- right. Hey, right. you have to wear an Abercrombie and Fitz tracksuit. No, oh, yeah. the- <laughs> It's the only Bentley made that still has ashtrays for cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds oh, like a shit. 90s fucking rap video over there. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, it's we're a nice jersey in the background. I played for Team USA, too. Yeah, you didn't win a silver medal by sitting on the bench doing nothing, buddy. <laughs> that although, was the extra. <laughs> although I have the silver medal just down here. I'm like, that doesn't get to go on the wall. First well, loser. You- you, you guys, uh, you guys had a world junior bet last season, didn't you? Calor between uh, Calor and yeah, Patty? he still didn't wear uh, Canada jersey. We had a bet. Oh, USA jersey. Yeah, you're on Twitter. Twitter. Oh yeah, Twitter. We, were, we were getting the USA people going on Twitter. Dude, I told you if you Patty, the problem is he never gave me USA jersey. I'm not gonna go buy one. If you give me yeah, USA I jersey, I'll I wear couldn't it. find one. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, because I only played for Team USA once, and I was shocked. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pat, Patty, keep your jersey. <laughs> Patty, just give them your give them your Olympic one when you get selected to the squad, man. They can't leave a champion like you off the team. Seriously. Yeah, I'll be the video coach. <laughs> <laughs> all right you got any more questions i uh, know i pretty much ran through all mine uh i got nothing left here i don't think nothing yeah nothing suck left. it what up Delore. suck on. up that suck it up with that broken leg buddy yeah what the fuck are you? What was that bullshit Making me uh, i like can't wait for pussy. this golf match <laughs> go back this, your answer. <laughs> this is hey, going we're to gonna be, dust you this hey, is going be to so be funny. a heavyweight matchup basically me versus killer so maybe Daddy? we just play one on one and you guys announce it. But I'm the same handicap. Point four. You said you're yeah. point five. We'll, and we'll then Biz and, Biz and Patty will get like eight and eight or fucking twenty and twenty. Does it even matter? And we'll have a time. Oh, so if I can't you give wait. me eight, then we're Patty can, Patty can when when Patty dials it in though, he gets those hands going. He's good around the green. Oh, so, so he is decent then. What is your actual better, handicap? Than Biz is an eighteen. Right now, it's an 8.5. Oh, dude. He but, said, oh, I hey, thought you were like, bitch. yeah, but it's a high 12. It's not an 8.5. It's, yeah, it, it, you're probably like a 12 or 10. Biz is like golf's a, hard. Here, here's how we're going to make it even. We're going to crush. You're going to do a Bud Light because you probably have a Bud Light sponsorship at this point. And I'm going to crush yes, a Budweiser on, on, on every tee box. And by the time 18 you rolls around. You think that's going to make it even, dude? This guy drinks for a living. You're yeah, going to be done. But I'm going to have be dialed in. I'm going to have DHM detox in my belly and he won't. And he's going to be he'll have his And he'll have his hair product killer and we'll let them do the swipe ups. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we'll actually just play some golf and have fun. You just let me know where you guys want to play. Cause I would love to get you guys. I would no, love we're doing it. We're doing you. it. Um, we're busy. And I are discussing the schedules, but you guys coming on again is awesome. We got both of you last year after the cup to get you guys together was even better this year. And congratulations two legends cup champs. We appreciate you guys coming on. Congrats. Thanks, boys. Thanks, fellas. All, All right, right fellas. appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. See Good you, luck boys. recovering from that spider bite. Huge thanks to Patty and Killer for joining us for the second year in a row. It was even more fun getting them both at the same time this year. Hope we give, hopefully, we give you a little bit of a locker room vibe there. We had a lot of fun doing it. Hopefully, you had a lot of fun listening to it. And we've been talking about protection lists a lot this episode. And you fellas can protect against uh, getting there too soon with some Roman swipes. The secret to longer lasting sex. The good folks at Roman, an online men's health company, have come up they come up with a waka waka, a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. There you go, Biz. Way to show them off. Roman swipes are an effective, easy to use, and do not require a script, thus potentially blowing your cover if the pharmacist chucks you under the boat. You ever go to the pharmacy, Biz, and they call your name out, and they're like, oh, we got your prescription for this, and you got to like cover your face. That, you don't have to worry about that with Roman swipes. That's the best part of them. And they can ship swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging. And each swipes packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. You just take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, be sure to let it dry, and you're good to good to good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash ticket so you can get your first month of swipes for just $5 when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash chicklets. Check that stuff out, fellas. It's good stuff. They almost got so me dumped. They sent me over a 24 pack of uh, rubbers, too. They got condoms now. Yeah, I my got those, too. Like, my, the, my old lady's like, what do you have planned tonight, buddy? I got them sent, too. I was like, hey. I was like, they're for hey. the Detroit trip. <laughs> I might dummy myself with it on, but don't you worry. <laughs> uh, hey, they got, they, got, they got lube now, too. Yeah. Do yeah. they? Yeah. Personal. I don't know what you have planned tonight, Homer, but you can count me out. <laughs> Oh, is that a Simpsons line? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a class, classic Simpsons that you guys don't laugh at, but hopefully some people do. My my girl actually said uh, Bart for a dog name, too, but uh, going back to the dog talk, I'm going to need some help with that one, folks. Santos L. Helper. All right, Seattle expansion. We've been teasing it all episode. Now Wait, we get... can't talk about uh, dog... what, what the fuck are these Tampa Bay Lightning singing in the bathroom before games? I don't know, dude. And the fact they wouldn't go into it, they might be singing some weird-ass shit. Acapella, <laughs> too? Like Eminem, fuck it, like I the... go acapella. Was that him who said that? Like the Baden Bellas or something. Jesus Christ. Just doing I would do any talks in the bathroom. Let's fucking go. Like they had to legit grab Savard and be like, yo, I dude, uh, with 13 sign. minutes on the clock, there's going to be six guys singing acapella, holding each other's hogs like it's a fucking <laughs> elephant walk before the game. But we win every game, so don't change a thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doing a uh, d- little docking action. <laughs> <laughs> and doc, doc talk, docking talk. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. With Pat, with, uh, oh, with Killorn. But hey, yeah. we we appreciate those guys coming on. Those oh. are the types of interviews we love, and and hearing what's going on behind the scenes. So, um, as as Killorn said, he was very vocal about it. He does not want to go to Seattle. It has nothing to do with Seattle. He just no. planned on retiring in Tampa. He loves it there. And man, you're coming off two Stanley Cups. Why would you want to change a goddamn thing? So don't be cock blocking the lightning, Ronnie. Yeah, boys, like I mentioned, the old Seattle expansion, finally getting the wheels rolling on that. Uh, 30 NHL teams have submitted their protection lists. Uh, a trade freeze is in effect until Thursday the 22nd. Seattle draft selections need to be sent to the NHL Central Registry and the NHLPA by 10 a.m. Wednesday, and the official expansion draft announcement will be 8 p.m. that night, in addition to any trades the team may make. And uh, one of the big names that was unprotected, Carey Price, he agreed to no waive his no-move clause, and according to The Athletic, he did that so he could pre protect Jake Allen, so he would stay on the team, the thinking being that Seattle won't take him. He's making uh, $10.5 million for the next five years. He's going to be 34 in August. He's due an $11 million bonus in September. Um, it's a calculated risk by the Burger Van biz, but, I mean, they could lose Carey Price, but at the same time, they do get out from under that deal. Yeah, I don't think Seattle's worried about the $11 million bonus. They just paid $650 million for a team. I Guys, I think the world of Carey Price, I, I would put a 100% stamp of approval that they are not going to pick up Carey Price. That's $10.5 million for five more years. Um, there are plenty of good goaltenders that are available, a lot of which are on good contracts. I just don't see a place where, where this happens. And we, we know how hard it is to win when so much of the team's cap, especially in a flat cap era where it's going to be stuck at it for a couple of years. It's, it's just too much going to one guy. And as I said, there's plenty available. They already got uh, Dreger. Is that how I pronounce it? Yep. They got him agreed to a, 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 a what is a three year deal at three point five. Yeah, he was I can double check Florida this yeah. year too. He, he was great down there. So I just I see him probably working with like a two goalie system, and I don't think that they're going to pick up Carey Price. And as we mentioned earlier, this is something that's probably been talked about between Burger Van. <clears throat> oh Jesus! Oh my God! I don't know what that was. Oh my God! Uh, maybe um, and Ronnie franchise. <laughs> In Ronnie franchise, and I think that uh, Angela Price, Carrie's uh, Carrie's wife, ended up posting something on Instagram saying it's all Gucci, like they ain't going nowhere. Hey, we ain't going anywhere. It's funny, uh, you know Steve Dangle Biz, the diehard Leafs fan, hardcore Leafs. Fan. Yeah, he's awesome. So check him out, Dangle. He's, he's I, awesome. I don't know him, but he cracks me up. He had a good tweet: the salary cap. So this is Carey Price. He writes, "Cool, he's one of the best goalies in the league. Cool." He just went to the Stanley Cup final. Cool. He's now available to a team starting from scratch for free. No trade, nothing. They can just literally take him. Wow, you want him? No. Because <laughs> in the end, it's perfectly described in that tweet. It's like, dude, this guy's making too much money. They're going to have two solid goalies combined making less than Carey Price would have made. It makes no sense. It would have never happened if Carey Price was 29 years old. If he was, yeah, you grab him. But he's at, he's, he's at an age where you cannot explain – um, ruining one of your best assets, which is all your cap space, by taking this goalie when you don't think you'll be competing for a Stanley Cup. Now, right, Vegas, they changed the mold. I don't think it can happen again. I was the dummy who called them the, uh, the, the future doormats of the league. They went to the cup final. I do not think that will happen again. And in that case, it makes no sense to spend that much money on a goalie who's going to be 30, turning 35 years old. Um, it was a calculated move. Now, you never know what's going to happen. I saw Pierre Lebrun sent out a tweet that earlier he would have said there was no chance, and he's kind of starting to waver in terms of the discussion coming no out edge. of Seattle as a possibility. I do not think it happens, uh, but it still was wild to see his name on there, and it would be so funny to see Canadians fans just lose their shit. So a couple things in this regard, too. He has a no-move clause, right? So if Seattle does pick him up, they wouldn't be able to just move him anywhere. So they, they would have to stick with him. I would assume that if he, at the slim chance that he does get picked up by Seattle, it's a situation where he goes there and then is then moved back to Montreal for a small I, price. I don't think they they can't do that though. They can't draft you. You can't draft the guy. That's not allowed. Like that. No, no, they can't do that. For, they expressly also, for that like, said reason. The argue the argument. Oh, well, then I'm the a fucking idiot. Dash three. Nah. No, 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 dude. You nah, question it. Got, the you're, you're definitely is, um, even today. Is uh. He has specific Northwest route, root. Um, what's the word? Um, roots. 
roots. roots. Like he played for Tri City Americans in the WHL. You know, he's familiar with the area, and it, it would be such a groundbreaking player to be able to bring in as your base, as your guy, the way Flurry was with Vegas. It's just the amount of money and it's just the age. And I don't think it makes much sense, but I mean, who knows what the hell it's like crazy things happen all the time in this game in any sport. I just cannot see that going down. Yeah. I'll, I'll be surprised if it does again. Yeah. They can afford the 11 mil, but do you want to pay a guy 10.5 who's going to be 34 in a few months for the next five years? I don't know. There's so many good goalies that you can get so much cheaper. No disrespect to her price, obviously, but. And the Seattle way, owner has made it clear. He will, he'll, he will spend the cap. Yeah. So oh yeah. That's, yeah. that's no issue there. Yeah. No, there's no reason fucking not to like piss that you can afford the team. You can afford to spend to the cap. Yeah. Uh, there, there is going to be a 72 hour exclusive UFA RFA negotiating window with players, uh, exposed by their team. So Seattle can make deals with these team, these guys over the next 72 hours. It'll close at 10 AM on, uh, July 21st. Uh, they cannot talk to UFAs from Vegas, uh, including Martinez, no second year Mark, because Vegas is exempt from the expansion draft. I've seen people complain about that, but, that's the way it's always gone. When you have an expansion, if you're new to the to the league, you don't you're not able to have your players plucked right away. Now nobody knew Vegas was going to have the success they've had so far. So I mean, you know, don't beat up Vegas or going by the rules. It's a five year exemption for expansion teams. I mean, we're done now. This is it. Thirty two teams, and I think yeah. that these expansion drafts are quite the mind pressful situation and they're really fun and they create a lot of dialogue and, and attention to the league, but uh, they've exhausted, they, they've exhausted us having two in, in the short amount of time. Yeah. That had. A lot of, a lot of details to pass over the last uh, 24 to 48 hours, but Hey, I love it. I love doing this shit uh, of the 324 players protected uh, Linus, Omak, Philip Grubauer and Joel, um, Joel, Joel, uh, Mia were the only three pending UFAs. Buffalo had no other goalies to protect and, Grubauer is negotiating with Colorado. Um, I know there's a list of high-profile players. Eric Engels tweeted out, I know everybody has their own definition of uh, high-profile wit. I know you were paying attention to the names like Price, Quick, Tarasenko, JVR, Niederreiter, Nida, Nida Zucker, Zucker, McCann, Kerfoot, Giordano, Voracek, uh, Cologne, who we've talked about, Palat, Gord, Johnson, Brendan Dillon. Now, if I'm Seattle, man, I'm loading up with as many cup winners as I can, especially all those t old Tampa Bay guys. Like, that's the winning pedigree you want to bring into a team like this. Uh, well, obviously, you see what happens. One guy was left unprotected. He's unrestricted as of uh, July 28th, Gabriel Landeskog. And apparently, according to our friend Andy Strickland, sounds like the Avs and him are way off on contract deal. The Avs are uh, offering eight years in the five to six million dollar range, which seems kind of low for him. Uh, he's supposedly looking for somewhere between nine and ten. Biz, I know you want to chat about this. What do you got to say? I, uh, you know, I, th I think extremely highly of him. He's their leader. I just, I, I mean, nine, nine to ten. I mean, I just don't see that as a possibility. I think seven and a half, you front load the contract, you implement a lot of signing bonus where he's kind of protected from, I wouldn't, I, I, he's not the type of guy to get bought out, but I just don't, you, you can't afford, especially with two guys in line coming shortly thereafter in, in McKinnon and McCarr, you can't be given a guy like Lanniskog nine to 10 million, at least not. Listen, if, if you if you want to say he got fucked by all this COVID situation, you could say he got fucked by it, but he's going to have to come over, come off that number, or he's not going to be playing for a Stanley Cup next year in Colorado. Wait, am I crazy here? But like, yeah, I don't. We've really had understand. him on. It's, I, I don't think he's a nine million guy. I don't either. Um, I also think that I, I think I counted. He's made. 60 million already no he's he, if he if he signed a contract for for seven and a half i did i think i did the math on seven he would get uh on seven he would be getting 54 million and he would be coming up just short of 100 million in a career earnings he hasn't quite made 50 million yet i believe 41 a little over 41 per yeah all right so he's made 41 so you know, they if they do want to sign him, it's one of those things we chatted about earlier and giving him the eight years to get the money down, right? I mean, dude, he, he, he wouldn't take eight years at like five. And I, dude, I'm not trying to tell someone ever what to take, but you've seen on that team and the deal McKinnon has, it's like he wouldn't take eight years times like five and a half, six for, for fucking $45 million to stay on that team, stay the captain of the, of the odds on favorite to win the Stanley Cup. But, I, I think Strickland is very legit. I think he knows, but that was very surprising for me to read that he wants that much money. 
I don't really get where that, that would be coming from looking at that team and how it's set up and how you've seen the Bruins and the Penguins and these teams with long running success go about things and taking a little less. It was, it was surprising to hear. Well, let, let, let's, let's go comparables right now. I think he was the first overall pick RNH or no RNH was the yes. first overall pick. Landis yes. Gog was number two. I think, I think he's a superior player than RNH and he just got 5.6. You told me, I think that I think, Seven to seven and a half is a very fair number because I do believe in, in intangibles. I think he's an incredible leader. I think he can handle his own business physically. Oh, I, I love the player. I'm just talking the number. Yeah. Right. But but if the team's at, you know, five and a half, six, I'm saying Colorado, well, you're not going to keep him around for that. And nor do I expect the captain to sign for that. I think that seven to seven and a half million is a very fair number. And going back to it earlier, it's like, well, like, like what can you do with 95 million career earnings opposed to doing 80 that that's what i'm saying it's that's kind of what i meant it's like dude what the, well, what, what still, the, well what's well, the well, if difference he's, if you sign an 8 year deal at 7 million that's 54 million correct 56. on top of the, fuck god damn it 56 on top of the 41 he's already made you're at 97 million career earnings i mean what can you do with 97 that you can't do with maybe 105 to 110 and at, at a certain point, and, and this is not an insult to, to him because I don't think he's the type of guy who has an ego, but at, no. a certain po- at, at a certain point, it's like, well, I mean, yeah, you, you, you can definitely go make $9 million somewhere else. I bet you Seattle would probably give him $9 million because you do need to solidify a leader and, and have a guy who's at least going to be able to be ar- around for a long time. Now, I think Giordano also ends up in Seattle, but I think he's also 38 years old. So... Yeah, he's he's a listen. I I think if he wants that type of money, he's gonna he can go get it elsewhere. I do not blame Colorado, given with what they have to do moving forward, if they don't give him what he thinks he deserves. So this is a, a I just don't si- Biz. I don't understand. I don't see anyone upset. Like I'm him, the fans, the GM. If he signed eight years, fifty two million, just a, you know, a, a shade below seven million a year, say six six and a half. It's like. Dude, you locked up your captain at a great rate. You're rich as shit. The team's loaded. We're going to get these other guys signed. I got plenty of money. The team's looking good. It was, I, I just was very surprised to hear the number he wants. If, if it's in fact yeah. accurate. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I mean, don't some, sometimes you, as part of negotiations, you maybe shoot for a little higher than you might actually get just to no doubt. sort of no set doubt. that bar too. And when that word comes out, that's, you know, that's what it is. But, yeah, I, I think I don't think Colorado wants to lose him, but at the same time, he, I mean, he's UFA man. This is his time to cash in. So, I mean, Colorado is probably his best chance to win right now. But if someone's wiggling nine point five million dollar tits out, you, it's tough to say no to that. I tell you what, with depending I, on I'm, who the I'm, team is, all right. I, I, I'm who also tits out. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> hey, I've never I've never been that guy, but I bet you there's a lot of guys out there who end up going for the big payday where they wish they would have gave up that you know, yeah. million to million and a half dollars each year to just be in a winning team. Now, I, I know I always go back to the state tax thing. I think it's fairly low in Colorado now, isn't it? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. It might be different in Denver. Now, if, now if Seattle's going to give it <laughs> – in Seattle, if they're going to give it to them, uh, there's no state tax there too. So if you're making nine sheets Ooh. in Seattle – Do we have another Is Washington state? a Washington no state tax tax state? Tax-free? I don't think, I don't think there's state tax in Washington. Oh, wow, Biz. We got another tattoo for you coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, That one's listen, going on his neck because he thinks the Kraken may sign him. I, I, I can't picture Landy in any other uniform, and I think he's such Me a too. great guy that he needs to go win a Stanley Cup there. The job has not been finished. Figure it out. Get together. Get in a room. Hey, maybe maybe he could do a couple trips to Nobu with Sakic and make up for it. Get the rock shrimp. Get a thousand orders. Maybe get a maybe get nice a million. Sake, maybe get expensive sake. Hey, get get him a million dollar gift card. Gary doesn't need to know about that, right? Speaking of that, remember yeah. that restaurant we went to? I'm not going to throw names out in Manhattan a few months ago, a few weeks ago, whatever it was. I got that fit the whole fish in the plate, and it was like you know, a pretty expensive plate. Yeah, when Biz what? poured the IPAs into the body armor bottle. Yeah, yeah, that was cl- classic Biz. You know, I was kind of disappointed. I'm not one to complain about my food. I it was mushy. It was like not a great piece of fish. You know again. what not, grinds my gears? No, but Didn't dude, you eat I'll the take, whole thing. 
No, fuck the bones. No. Gold, gold, the no. eyeballs and the bones. No, but I uh, going back to Columbia the other day, right? I was saying to you boys last episode, we were going to some island that next day. Well, we we took a boat, a couple boats to this national park island way off the uh, off the coast of Cartagena. And you pull up and there's all these huts and they got food and booze and whatever else you need on that island it is absolutely there. Well, I ordered like a seafood medley and I got the same thing, like a whole fish that had everything on the plate. Honestly, boys, it was one of the best piece of fishes I ever had. Obviously, they probably caught it that day. Ten times better than that fucking slop I got down there. That wow. Day. I was pulling the head apart, eating the cheeks and everything. The cheeks are the best part of the fish, too, by the way. The Not cheeks, fired. like up yeah. near the gills? Yeah, like, well, yeah. And like any meat, like in the head area. Yeah, the fish, the cheeks, the good shit. I was legit oh. pulling the bones apart on that that mofo. Yeah, I well, get I'm some glad pictures. You, I'm glad you had a good experience, and I guess we won't be going back to that restaurant in NYC. Well, me and Whit will. Yeah, I'm uh, going. Yeah, the sushi was good. I just didn't care for the for the piece of fish. There. How do? Yeah. Uh, so, are we done on the Landy discussion? Uh, Let's you, hope uh, Landy remains yeah. an AV. He's yeah, he, we like, want him I, I thought you said it best, Biz. If the job ain't done, second overall pick, been there forever. Let's resign. Let's end up making the call that he gets eight years. 58 million, seven okay. point whatever, two a year. Math. Let's guy. get a GoFundMe going. Yeah, let's get sure. all the ads. Help him out. Let's get him an extra couple grand. All right, boys. You got any other notes on the Kraken talk? I think all that Kraken. Well, um, oh, I for the Kraken. I, I, I really want to talk like, about Giordano. We got to talk about Giordano. One year left. The captain of the Calgary Flames. He's left unprotected. One year left on his deal at I think six and a half. Six, seven, five. He'll There's be a no. That's a no brainer. You select him. I actually looked at the list. I would select him. I would select Dermot um, from Toronto, and I would uh, take Dylan from Washington. Those are my three left. Him or, him or Jensen. Him or oh, Jensen. Jen- so Jensen, Schultz, and Dylan are 3D on Washington, left unprotected? I believe so. There's also a kid from Winnipeg. Um, it's not DeMello, is it? Yeah, it is. Yep. Dylan He's DeMello. A, so, listen, you pay $650 million for an expansion team, folks. You're going to get some solid players. Now, from what I'm hearing, when when um, originally when Vegas was going into it, their mindset was, we're going to get all these guys, and if it doesn't turn out good, at least we can move these guys to gain even more assets as far as draft picks so they could kind of unload it. And then they ended up catching lightning in a bottle, and they were more buyers at the deadline. But a guy like Giordano, they would – in my opinion, they would be selecting him in order to bring him over. He's got one year left. Hopefully he has a good start to the season, man. You're telling me, you're telling me that you can't get at least a first rounder and a really nice prospect for a team who's making a stab at the cup at him. Imagine him on your second pairing. He's still playing first line minutes in, in, in Calgary. And for those of you who forgot Giordano's two years removed from winning the Norris, like this guy is a freak off the ice. I think I think one of the people he brought to the NHL award ceremony was his trainer. He's good buddies with him. He's one of the tip top shapes as far as older guys in the league. So this is going to be a big pickup for them. And worst case, Ontario, they end up slinging him at the deadline and gaining a really nice piece back, which is going to be the case if they don't end up having a good start anyway. Think about it, man. They're going to have a good, solid goaltending. They're going to get some decent pieces on D. And much like you saw from the Vegas Golden Knights, a full roster of of second hungry. to third. Hungry. Hungry players. Hungry, hungry hippo, second to third line players. So no weak spots. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. We talk about Eichel, but it's all rumors up until this point. Um, G says he's hearing rumblings that he expects him to move in the next week. So I would imagine uh, probably a year from now he's getting moved. <laughs> hey, um, Biz, Giordano, like, G-G-G-G. you haven't heard anything from him. You talk, you know, Suter hung up on Garen. Like, I wonder, he had a reason to be pissed about that. I I know Brad Tree Living, and I know he loves the guys, guys, and, and I would imagine he has the biggest soft spot for Giordano. They had to protect Dubé. Dubé is the guy who who they chose to protect over him. Uh, probably the wise play long term. I w- I would assume this was a long conversation that they had, and I would hope that no bridges has bridges yeah. have been burned. I'm just uh, curious, but 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 I hear you. He's you know he's in the last year of his deal. I'm sure his family settled in there, but. You know, it's it's a business, man. And and Brad Tree Living is also under the gun now, too, man. I was like gonna say, I they, think I think this is the beginning of what you see some wild changes this summer in Calgary. Well, there you I don't go. know if Goudreau will be there. I don't know what's gonna go on, but with what's happened the last few years there, sorry to interrupt, 
they can't continue going into next season with what's been there before. So that's probably part of it, right? We got to change everything up here. Yeah. Oh, especially if they go another year without making playoffs. 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 Be lucky if we win another game. Um, anything else on the hockey Presco. front, guys? Yeah, a few more hockey notes, but uh, that'll do for the expansion stuff. Again, you know, there's a lot of names out there, but we don't want to waste time just throwing names we out. We can talk more when the yeah, roster comes out. Yeah, exactly, out. exactly, which, again, we're going to know Wednesday night so we can break it down for you a little bit more next episode. Uh, in the meantime, the internet has connected us with the latest news, long-distance friends, and random rumors from Twitter accounts, but unfortunately, it's also connected us with hackers and cyber criminals. Well, Aura protects you from the worst of the internet so you can still enjoy the best of it. Aura provides digital security protection to keep your online finances, personal information, and tech safe from online threats. It's all-in-one protection from identity theft, financial fraud, malware, scam sites, and so much more. With Aura, you'll get alerted to fraud and threats fast, like if your online accounts or passwords were leaked online or if someone tries to open a bank account in your name. Aura is easy to set up. All plans come with $1 million in identity theft insurance to help recover your stolen funds and experience U.S.-based customer support that's got your back. Aura is a new type of security service that protects all of your online information and devices with one simple subscription. With an easy online dashboard and alert sent straight to your phone, Aura keeps you in control and guides you through solving any issues. And for a limited time, Aura is offering our listeners up to 40% off plans when you visit Aura.com slash chicklets. So go to Aura.com slash chicklets to get complete protection and savings of up to 40%. That's A-U-R-A dot com slash chicklets. So check them out and protect yourself online. All right, boys, a couple of other NHL notes before we get to the et cetera stuff. Uh Yaroslav Halak will not be back with Boston next year. Not a total surprise there. Uh, looks like they're going to go into the air with Swayman, possibly Vlada. I don't know if they're going to bring in a veteran or what, but either way, uh, Yaro Halak's career in Boston is done. So uh, there was an article about Shea Weber and his injury, and it could lead to a potential NHL Players Association beef. I don't know if that's going to happen. Can you he explain has- that to me? Or yeah, I'm gonna try series? to. I'm gonna try to do that now. He's got thumb, foot, ankle, and knee injuries. Uh, Elliot Friedman had a, a good piece the other day. No uh, spider he, bite. He no, <laughs> he noted that the league and the union are quote doing their due diligence on the situation and future. Uh, Weber's got five seasons left at a seven point eight million dollar cap hit, but only twelve million in actual cash. Uh, so if he were to retire, Nashville would, would be the team to get fucked on that cap recapture thing for $4.9 million through 26 if he retires. But I can't imagine that happens. I mean, I don't see how he doesn't just go on LTIR like Pranga, Savad, Hosa, and so many other guys and, you know, just finish there until you, until the, the contract runs out. I can't imagine he, he was going to retire and leave money on the table, no? But I, what I, would I, the argument end up being? I, I don't know that I, I don't know if the well, team it is- happened. It happened with Luongo. It happened uh, with, I, I forget a few of the other names, but, but I will say this. I don't think that Luongo retired because of injuries. Like if, if you're telling me that he's got this laundry list of injuries and he can't play because he physically can't get there, there's gotta be a way to step in and be like, Hey, he's not, because if Nashville ends up getting fucked by this, that's bullshit. Well, that, that's what I think this whole thing is. As far as Luongo, he, he got a job in the organization, so they probably, you know, maybe did something in the back back door or whatever where, like, okay, you might not get all that money, but you'll get a job for however many, however many years. I don't think they can come out and say that type of shit. It just seems like it's a story about something that might potentially happen with, where – you know, he's got all these injuries. He can't play anymore. But when these guys are not going to voluntarily retire, leave money on the table. Yeah. So. so I thought this is such a no brainer based on the prior ones where it's like, yeah, I'm not retiring. Everyone knows I'm not going to play again, but I'm not retiring until I get that money. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I, I don't really get. Yeah, I, I mean, well, again, it's I think it's almost like a preemptive story type thing. Like this could get ugly, but it might not. You know, I know I know it was in the list of uh, what do you call it? Topics for today. I, I don't Just think it's going to be the coyotes. a thing. Huh? Yeah. Just trade him the Coyotes. Future Coyote Shea Weber. <laughs> Fuck, I wish Webs. I thought to just him say and, that. Him and Pranga are going to be the most de- dominant pairing in NHL history. We got Hosa, Datsuk. Oh. Our, our, our Let's alumni, go, Yotes. Hey, our alumni team is going to be like the lightning. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, another Canadian's note, uh, head coach Dom Duchamp signed a three-year extension. No surprise there uh, after his impressive showing in the playoffs this year. So he'll be behind the Habs bench for the next few years. 
And a very busy month for the NHL is going to continue next weekend as the NHL entry draft happens after the expansion draft. So uh, still got a lot of stuff. And then, of course, free agency at the end of the month. So still quite a bit of stuff to get to. Um, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Before we get to the non-hockey stuff, um, hey, we can't help GMs from getting ripped off this week, but we can help your home from getting ripped off thanks to our friends at Simply Safe. When Simply Safe Home Security's founders, Chad and Eleanor Lawrence, designed their first security system in the kitchen, they did it for a very personal reason. Their friends had just had their home broken into. They were struggling to find a security system that was simple to set up and would make them feel safe again. And making people feel safe is what Simply Safe has been doing ever since that moment 15 years ago. My favorite thing about Simply Safe is the ease of use. From customizing a simple from customizing a system on simplysafe.com slash chickets to the simple home setup that even I can do. Simply Safe has highly trained security experts ready whenever you need them, whether that's during a fire, a burglary, a medical emergency, or even just when you're setting up the system. There's always someone there who has your back to keep you safe and to make sure you feel safe. To learn more about how Simply Safe can protect you and your family, visit simplysafe.com slash chicklets today to customize your system and get a free security camera. You can also get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Once again, that's simplysafe.com slash chickens. So be sure to check them out and keep the homestead safe. All right, boys, hitting the home stretch here. We like to have a little fun with some non-hockey topics. Uh, I don't know. We got the the Opal, the former British Open wit, the Open, Giannis, uh, I can't even say his last name, Milwaukee Bucks, unreal fucking finals he's been having so far. Ted All Lasso right, can gets, we, can we, yeah. can we quickly go into Giannis and play that clip? Um, yeah. He, he had a quote. I don't know the exact question, but Grinelli, play the, play the clip in him talking about ego and what it can do to an athlete. I mean, 26 years old and, you know, I've covered plenty of players who, didn't seem like they figured the ego part out until their thirties. I mean, who taught you about what it, why that's important and, and to handle it that way? Uh, I think, I think, I think, uh, I'll say life. Usually let me tell you this. Usually when, um, from my experience, right? Like when I think about like, oh yeah, I'm, I did this. I, you know, I, I'm so great. I had uh, 30. I had 25, 10, and 10, or whatever the case might be, because right. you're going to think about that. Oh, we want this and that. Usually the next day, you're going to suck. Right. You know, uh, <laughs> simple as that. You Like, the next few days, you're going to be terrible. And uh, I figured out, like, a mindset to have that, like, when you focus on the past, that's your ego. I did this. You know, um, we were able to, you know, um, beat this team for all. We, we did. I did this in the past. I want that in the past. Right. And when I focus in the future, it's my pride. Like, yeah, next game, game five, I do this and this and this. Right. You know, I'm going dumb. That's your pride talking. Like, you, it doesn't happen. Like, you're right here. And um, I kind of like try to focus in the, you know, in the moment, in the present. And that's humility. That's being humble. That's not setting no expectation. That's going out there, enjoying the game, competing at a high level. And uh, I think I've had people throughout my life that helped me with that. But that's a skill that I've tried to, like, kind of, um, um, how you say, kind of, like, perfect it. Master it. Uh, yeah, master it. And uh, it's been working so far. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to stop. I thought that was one of the most amazing quotes I, I've ever heard in a press conference. And you can tell... I don't watch basketball very much, but you can tell like how humble this guy is. And I don't know if it's being from Europe and being from an area where it's not AAU superstar. I'm the fucking man from 12 years old, having everyone kiss your ass from the time you can even remember. But that guy seems to have a head on the shoulders and understand that if you think of yourself and w what you're supposed to accomplish and what you're supposed to get done and what you've done before and how good you are, it truly is like ego and ego alone. And ego is the enemy, right? There's a book out there that talks about that. And I, and I, I thought he was so well-spoken in saying it's all about the future. It's all about what's next. And, and I was just impressed by a guy who's as good, you know, I don't know much about the NBA, but I'm guessing he's one of the best players in the league, right? If not the yeah, best. He's won, he's won MVP back to back years and he's about to win at finals MVP. Fuck, man. If you can't take what he's saying to heart in talking about, like, as a teammate, as an athlete, as anything you're doing in life, 
to not have your ego involved is so difficult yet so important. And I think if you talk to us on the show, I mean, I don't have an ego. I've no one's ever said it. I would never even consider myself as a guy with an ego. But if you cannot focus on what you're supposed to do and what you've done before, it will only enhance your life moving forward. I swear to God, because when you try to think about like what you should get and what what you believe is yours and what you believe people are screwing you over for, it all comes back to ego. It's like it's a great book. I'm going to get the author, Biz. You can give your opinion on it. But Rory McIlroy talked about it once. Yeah. And then the other aspect of it is he says when he focuses on the future, it's it's his pride as well. Now, guys, like, I, you know, I'm I'm a little bit of a slow learner and, you know, I've had uh I, I've had to learn along the way. And I think that earlier in my career, I wish I would have been as uh, level headed. I guess, how do I say this? Well, no, it's a hard, it's a hard topic to, to discuss because I would I, say that in the past I've, I've, I don't, and I don't want to turn it into, to like purse about personally. No, but, I but would, I, that's what I was just going to say. I was going to say the same thing. Like I look back at the end of my career, it was all ego. It was a hundred percent ego. It was, it was, Oh man, I used to do this. Whereas if I looked at it, like, Hey, you're not what you were. You're not even close to what you were. Let's see what we can do moving forward. Let's see with what we got. No, my mind was like, no, no, I should be in the lineup. I was fucking, you know, I was a great player in Pittsburgh. Like it, it's, it's, it's such a mental battle to try to get over in terms of looking what has already happened. And it doesn't even just pertain to sports. Yeah. I would say earlier in my career, my, my ego definitely, definitely hurt me. And and that's why the and that's why the reporter said it takes most guys until their thirties to realize yeah. that, and you know I yeah I guess it was a bit of an anchor for me especially early on where hey but that's life too eh? you got to learn as you go but uh, but I I would say that I, I I ditched it quite a bit though when when I finally had to to switch to forward I wanted to be a defenseman but when that situation happened it was kind of like that's when i realized that it was more important to just try to be a better team player and it, it you know it wasn't necessarily about what i'd accomplished in the past but more about about the team and 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 and, and to be fair when i kind of accepted that and just went along for the ride that's when i ended up getting to the nhl so no shit know. that that's the funny part and like yeah. even now with like golf for me like i'll you know i'll play in a tournament the past few years and i'm like you know i'll go in it's like do I, 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 what if I don't play good? What if I shoot 80? Like that's ego. If you think about it, it's like, who fucking cares? You're worried about what people will think if you play really bad. Like, oh, you, you know, people shit on you. That's, that's worrying about what others think as opposed to just worrying about doing the best you can. I think that that, that, that quote goes a lot into like, if you worry what other people think about you, in any aspect of life, you are so fucking behind the eight ball to begin with. You have no idea. And like, like, like the reporter said, it's so true. When you're young, you don't get it. It's like, oh my, th th these people are watching this. These people are saying this. These people are going to think this. In the end, I talked to my mother. I was like, she says she's never been happier before in her life in her sixties because the older you get, the less you the give less a you fuck. give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that there's also a fine line to, to try to be. Uh, to, to, staying try to be self-aware and, yeah. and also worrying about what other people think um you know I, i'd be lying if like even to this day i i, I don't do it you know you, tr you try to oh I yeah think, of course I, I i think a big component of probably reading that book is just finding ways to also control it understanding what it is and and and, and dealing with it a lot sooner than maybe you did in the past Cause like, yeah. I, I think it all comes down to like the, the initial thoughts in your head and then it continues to spiral out of control more and more and more and more. The, 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 I guess the part of growing up is just eventually gaining control of it, understanding when it's happening right away and then boom, putting a stop to it. Now, it's RA, exactly, you're, you're, it's you, perfectly you, said, you know, you're older than us. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure that at a certain point you realized it. do you, do you ever struggle with it? Do you ever, you know, what, Paul, I, I probably did when I was younger, like, it was almost like uh, when I grew up, just like insecurity and self confidence. Those weren't even like concepts to kids in the seventies and eighties. They were like, but they, they had them. discussed. But you, did, but if you didn't have it, you didn't know you didn't have it. So almost like being ignorant about it was yeah. almost a relief in a way. But then you know you get to a point you're like, okay, yeah, you struggle with like anybody confidence, or self confidence, self esteem, and shit. Yeah, I, I had that for years. I spent way too many years worrying about what people thought, how you look, how you dress, how you wear, all that stupid shit. But at a certain point. I don't know exactly when it was. I mean, it was a while ago where 
you don't give a fuck anymore. Like not that you're ignorant and you're like rude or anything. You just like, you realize that it doesn't matter what uh, like, not seem strangers, even friends. Like the only people you need to answer to are yourself and maybe your parents and your wife and your kids. And other than that, man, I mean, fuck everybody else as far as what they think. As long as, yeah. like, again, you're not being rude or an asshole and you'll live your life in your own terms. And it's very liberating to get to that point to just, you know, I mean, I think you know me by now. I pretty much march to the beat of my own drummer. And I do listen to people. But at the same time, if, you know, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it and be a goofball yeah. and whatever. And it, it, it is it's it's kind of a journey to get to that point to realize, like, hey, man, I, I'm I'm free. I'm going to do what I want. And, and and it's it's fucking great to be at that point. What's up? What? All right. That's well said. And Biz, you said it perfectly. And it's something I struggle with. And maybe it's not necessarily the ego thing that the Giannis quote has brought up this discussion. But for me, I have I have moments where I have very negative thoughts and, and sometimes the thoughts are almost scary, like bad things that could happen in my life. It's, it's, it's brutal. But what I've learned and how you worded so perfectly, Biz, is you sit there and you say, that's just a thought. That doesn't mean anything. It's not necessarily going to happen. Let's move on, get rid of it, and keep going. And so when you can kind of understand and realize you're having certain thoughts that you don't want to have, all it is is thinking, realizing it's a thought. It doesn't matter out of your head and keep going. So I like how you said that in terms of like realizing it doesn't matter one bit. And to realize when you're having thoughts and you're feeling down on yourself, it's about boom, stopping it in its tracks and moving forward and realizing that is not the case. So I like how you worded that. I didn't realize we were going to go this deep into a conversation about it, but I do remember seeing it. And I, I remember being envious at the fact of how young he is and how he realizes that. And he's aware of it now being like, wow, like, I remember when I was at that age, like I still had a ton of work to do. Now, RA, you also mentioned that back then people were just not really aware of it. And I guess it kind of goes right back to the mental health discussion where I feel like this type of information and and books, you, you mentioned one of them, ego is the enemy. I've had a couple of people in media uh, when, when, you know, I have reached out to in order to vet and have conversations about maybe whether it's people attacking you online and how they deal with it and, you know, what, what their thought presses are both people that I talked to about it sent me that book and then they'd read it because they'd had those experiences where eventually that they read them and learn from it. And whatever it is, whoever is listening, what you're dealing with and whatever you think is holding you back in life. Nowadays, there is a shit ton of information about there and information and, and, and knowledge is the power. So anything that you are dealing with in, in a sense of the, the, the mental health side of it, if, if, if there's, Go, go see if there's a book for you that you can use those if use and find those tools in order to benefit your life. Now, I, and I'm, this is somebody telling you this who has a shit ton of work to do. It never stops. Everyone does. It, it never stops. It, it, you constantly got to put that work in, in, and look internally. So uh, I'm glad we ended up talking about it. And uh, you know, it's, it's obviously something that I've dealt with in the past and something that I've not necessarily not been great at, but something that I've gotten better at and, and continue to work toward. Now, like, Granelli, as a younger guy, like do you, do you ever you give these things thought? Like you might be in the same boat that I was when I was your age where I didn't even know what these things were. I think when you live in the day and age of the internet where people are always telling you you suck and you're you're horrible and you're bad at your job i think yeah it it definitely eats at you as being a young guy because we spend so much of our time on social media but spending so much time with you guys i've learned to kind of put that in the back of my head and not really give a fuck so that's kind of where i stand with all of it and i think for anyone listening like when you are having thoughts that you don't want to have i i tell you because i'm working on it just sit there and take a moment. It's a thought. It's um, what's the what's the oh, Dr. Durant gave me a, it. It's ex, it's accepting the thought. It's taking a moment and it's getting it out. Whereas a lot of people, you know, you, you, all right, well, what's going on at work? This guy got a This guy got a fucking raise. He got the promotion. I should have got the promotion. What's going to happen to me now? I'm screwed two years from now because I didn't get the. hold on. Deal with what's going on now. And think about what you can do moving forward, because it is so true in terms of getting in your mind certain situations that may never happen. And you waste so much time and energy on worrying about things that won't ever happen. It's like it's such a waste of energy. So it's a it's a topic that I like the fact that it's 
brought about and talked about so much more now, but it's interesting in getting all of us are so different. We're different ages. We're different people. We're different personalities. And yet we all go through the same thing. So we're talking about ego and an amazing athlete who's giving a, a pretty cool quote in terms of like what he's going through in his life, but it really relates to everyone and how you approach your life and how you approach your job and your family and just trying to not think about the bad possibilities and moving forwards, just living and taking in each moment as they come. As a wise man said once, don't worry, be happy. Yeah, the man, Bob Marley. <laughs> and by the way, back to Giannis. I mean, that fucking block in game four was incredible to swing the tide. And then that dunk, I mean, I've never seen a game ceiling dunk in game five like that. Off the steel, tosses it up. I mean, it was one of those things you jump out of your chair when you watch play the game. You guys must have seen it. when you. Oh, I saw it. your tweet right away. I was watching it. Yeah, Holiday with the strip. Drew Holiday. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce it, Drew? They say Drew. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was Drew or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a what a play. Unfortunately, it was against the Suns, who who you know oh, are yeah. a local team here. From and Valley. They've uh they were up 2 0. So I don't know. Go Bucks going back home to potentially seal this thing. But yeah. guys, did you see my tweet? It, did you see my tweet? Uh no, but any but going back to the discussion quick, any of any of you young people who listen, uh ingest that quote and you know give it some thought and and i think that moving forward it's definitely going to help you if you're able to understand exactly what he's talking about i know i know it helped me and reminded me of of, of things that i need to work on no doubt and my tweet uh not to go back to me <laughs> speaking of me, is, uh, uh, so so speaking i of me. i i was watching the game when phoenix went up 2-0 and they showed these guys walking off and it was the guys. I don't know if all the guys had played and they just looked like miserable. Like one guy in particular was number 15 on the Suns. I wrote that he looked Cameron like it Payne. was me. Cameron Payne. Payne. It looked like me walking to the rink in Russia. Now I got a million fucking responses uh, uh, of the Kobe Bryant quote. The job ain't finished. They're not happy. They haven't won shit. Dude, go back and look at this fucking Cameron Payne walking off the court after going up 2-0. And I found out he didn't play that game or he didn't play in big moments. Dude, he looked so fucking miserable and it was solely because he wasn't happy. And now it's 3-2 Milwaukee and everyone thought I was a fool. No, you could tell that one of their major players, this number 15, Payne, was pissed off because he didn't play in a win in the NBA Finals and now they're down. So I don't know what's going on with Phoenix. I know they got a great team. I know the Suns and Four guy was great when he beat the shit out of those two Muppets. But still... To see a guy that disappointed after going up 2-0 because he didn't get his showed me that Phoenix was in trouble. Did you get that information from the same burner account that gave me all my Coyotes information? What information did I just say that a burner account could have Well, you me? said he didn't look happy, but I think I gathered from, from what was going on in the post-game press conferences were that they were just even keel. Business no, as usual. Look, at, look at my tweet in the video right. and look at all the players and then look at him. I did. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll give it another look. I just he thought, didn't play. Okay. All right, we can move on. I'll, I'll take the L. Yep. Put it on my forehead, all right? No, City of maybe. Milwaukee. Uh, one game from their first title in 50 years. Uh, Pro Good for them. Never won a World Series. I love and... when small markets get the job done. Oh, that, that's I lost why this... the Calder Cup final to, to Milwaukee, but maybe that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, no disrespect to the AHL. But, no disrespect you know. to Biz's ring, which should be two. Um, with, and another thing we both, both keep with the sports, the open. I didn't get any bets and I was down Columbia and I fucked up my time and all that stuff. But Colin Morikawa, I think he was anywhere from 33 to one to 35 to one. Nice little payout for him. But the, uh, today was pretty drama free. I should say Sunday was pretty drama free the last day. No. Yeah, it was drama free because you saw an absolute machine at work in Colin Morikawa. Colin Morikawa has won two majors now. He's won two majors, the PGA in his first try and the British Open in his first try. The only other guy to do that is named Bobby Jones in like 1926. Bobby Jones pretty much built Augusta National. He was the man behind the Masters. He's a legend in the game of golf. So you're looking at a future, no, a current superstar in the game of golf. This guy, Colin Marikawa, is not the longest player in the world. I think he's around 100th in distance off the tee. But nobody has ever hit their irons since Tiger Woods like Colin Morikawa. This guy, Biz, strokes what do you, what, game. What do, you, what do you mean, just as far as accuracy? 
in, in, in terms of his distance to the pin. So when this guy was in college, he went and did a club fitting, or I don't know exactly what he was doing, but they measured his dispersion from 185 yards. So say for, you know, guys on tour, it's a seven iron, maybe an eight iron, six iron, I don't know, but it's a long distance. His average distance from the pin from 180 yards is better than the PGA Tour's average from 130 he like is, how close he can get it to the pin? Dude, this guy does not miss irons. So he's so 10 off the feet tee, every time. Oh, dude, every single iron, this guy's 8 to, to 15 feet. And, and it, is, it is a clinic. And if you watch him play, he's got a very slow, deliberate takeaway. And then all of his speed is at and after the ball. And he's got perfect balance perfect rhythm and he's able to hit fairways by not overpowering golf courses he hits fairways and now when i say he isn't super long dude if you played with this guy you'd be blown away he's still hitting the ball 310 315 but he is getting in the fairway and then he's shoving dart after dart after dart and in his two major championship final rounds his two wins in in the pga and the open today he does not have a bogey yeah so I saw that minus it, four no bogey yeah, he's just a, he is a machine. Um, I think if you look at the list of major winners in the history of golf, players with one, there's a lot of fluke names, names you wouldn't recognize. There, there really is no names with two majors or more that are flukes. So I think you're looking at like a guy who could win seven, eight majors in his career. Okay, so you said that it was it was his two first majors. For so each of those? Yeah, it was the first time he ever played in the PGA he won and the first time he ever played in the Open he won. Has he played in Augusta yet? Yeah, he played two. He played in the one, D, uh, maybe three. I know he played in the one DJ won and I know he played this year when um, Matsuyama won. So was he, was he very highly touted coming out of, did he come out of college? Yeah, he played at Cal, um, which is a huge golf program, Pac-12, you know, big time division one golf. He was a, you know, he was a world class amateur. He was a guy who was coming on tour in terms of in terms of can't miss uh, potential. So it was wild to see um, him come and just have that that much success. I think he's the only man um, to win the British and the PGA before he's 25 years old. Besides, uh, the only man to do that's Tiger Woods. So, so you so you think for sure he's getting the 10 majors? Nope, nope. 10 is 10 is ridiculously high and how deep golf is now. But I think this guy, if he doesn't get like five, six majors, I would be really surprised because the one issue he has is, is putting. And this week he didn't have a three putt. If he puts dude, if he, if this guy every week, he loses shots to the field and putting now golf has turned golf has turned into such a, uh, it can be it can be defined by stats, right? Where you look at strokes gained off the tee, you look at putting, and every tournament he puts below average. If he putted average to the tour tournaments that he plays in, he would win so many of them. So the thing is about golf that nowadays, if you're a ball striker, it really doesn't matter if you can putt that well because if you can get off the tee and you can hit greens in regulation, you're going to make a lot of money. Now, when he's able to putt well, then he's going to win majors. So I just think that you see him getting off the tee and you see his iron play and it's like this kid's a straight up world beater. He also comes off as the most level headed. He comes off a lot like Giannis. He has his head on his shoulders. He's not into the nonsense away from the away from the um, the course. He's very focused. He's very driven, and he's a player who's going to be around for the next fucking twenty years, dominating because he's a freak. Okay, now since we're on the golf talk and uh, we're done the stroke fashion, session for this guy, uh, you know who's not doing good off the tee? Who? Is Bryce Bryson DeChambeau. <laughs> who was chirping his fucking club maker the other day. What's one of the biggest on assholes, <laughs> one of the biggest assholes in the history of golf. Guys, Already? This guy, oh, this guy cannot get out of his own way. So for people who don't know, Bryson DeChambeau, we've ripped on him before. He works with Cobra. He's a he's a Cobra Puma guy. So Puma makes the clothes and Cobra makes the clothes. Oh, I didn't know that they own, they own that. Okay. Yeah, so Bryson has made this effort to gain the weight and gain the distance. It's been amazing. We've talked about, you know, he won the U S open and he's decided he's going to hit the bar as far, hit the ball as far as possible. Now in that process, this dude's swinging 130 miles an hour. I swing my driver like 108. I'm a big guy. I bunt it. 108's not great for my size. What am yeah. I probably like 50? No, you probably swing it at like a hundred, hundred miles an hour, maybe 102, but the tour average, I think it's like, 
114 miles per hour. This is their, their this is their driver, right? Well, Bryson's swinging 130 miles an hour. Now, with that, you got to realize how hard it is to get the ball to fly straight. He also hits a five degree driver. For everyone out there that has a driver, your driver's probably 10 degrees, 11 degrees, 12 degrees. It makes the ball go in the air. He's swinging it so fast that he doesn't need much loft on his driver. Well, in the process of trying to work and find a driver that can like have the ball successfully come off the face at that speed, they are nonstop around the clock working for him. This is, this is Cobra Golf. Bryson DeChambeau comes off the first round at the open and he says, um, yeah, you know, the driver sucks. Now I'm listening to this press conference. I was listening to it live. As he said that, I'm like, oh, he's trying to say he didn't drive the ball well today. No, this fucking clown goes in more in depth and starts ripping on the club. Like the manufacturer, the face of the driver, he's going at the actual product that he's using. He's going after the company who pays him tons of money to hit their clubs. And what, what happens after these ridiculous comments? The big dog at, at Cobra comes out and says, this guy, and I'm paraphrasing, it is so painful when he says things this idiotic and stupid. It is like an eight-year-old at times. Dude, this is the guy who, when his caddy quit two weeks prior, his caddy quit Thursday morning, the first round of the Rocket Mortgage Classic, where he's defending champion, where we talked about this. This was the guy who caddied for him. The guy who came out and called him idiotic and stupid and like an eight-year-old was the guy who was on his bag when his caddy quit. So oh. at some point, you got to wonder, is everyone going to quit on this guy? He's that much of a fucking insecure baby who's constantly, constantly chirping the people who are doing their best to try to get him the product he needs. The guy from Cobra came out and said, <laughs> we have 20 people nonstop working for him. We're making driver after driver after driver that isn't good enough we're doing our best and he knows that and he's still coming on and everyone's listening to what he's going to say and ripping our product it's like this fucking guy i don't think i I, I didn't realize all that other stuff ended up at, so the i like how they went back after him but i didn't oh, realize yeah. that guy who ended up taking the old caddy's place was the guy who fired back at him yes and i, I don't uh, golf people correct me if i'm wrong i don't ever remember like a manufacturer like going back at the player i know patrick <laughs> reed patrick reed another asshole out there he's gone i mean he fuck, went, we, we went at the sandblaster and they didn't even come back at us <laughs> yeah exactly well that was an illegal club but this d cannot get out of his own way and it goes into i think his entire team his entire squad i don't know if he has one person around him that isn't a yes man and and man, this guy's going to make fucking 50 million playing golf, if not yeah. more, I don't know. But to be to be a person that is that clueless and that out of touch with reality, you just wonder at some point, will he be so dumb that there's just nobody that wants to be associated with him? And then we'll get him in a sandbagger and fucking dust him in that, and then he'll be done. He'll be playing on the fucking and water barrier. Brooks, he'll be playing and, at and the water Kepka, barrier open. And Kepka comes back and says, I love my driver. <laughs> he said the next day he goes i drove it great i love my driver <laughs> oh my he just you know he's sipping a cocktail after all these things are going on saying oh he's watching the demise of of, of bryson yeah either way uh, but, yeah, i'm sorry biz i didn't mean to no no we're done we're done again. buddy are you sure yeah i i, I don't know where are we and did you do know. anything else stupid <laughs> is he blaming uh, the tea manufacturer Hey, I'm just glad to see an American win the the Open. It was it was good shit to see a, a guy go across the pond and, and win one. So yeah, congrats um, to Colin Morikawa, superstar. Absolutely love watching him play. Ted Lasso, twenty Emmy nominations for the season one. I don't know if you guys caught up. I was away, but I did manage to find that out. Um, season two drops, I believe it's Friday the twenty third. So I'm looking looking forward to seeing how season two does after you have such a great season on like that. It's all these Emmy nominations, everybody loving the show. So they've kind of set the um set the bar pretty high. So I'm very interested to see if they can lead uh follow up well. Well, a couple things regarding uh Ted Lasso. It's Jason Sudeikis or yep. Sudeikis. Jason uh, Sudeikis, yeah. He he wore to the to season two premiere, he wore a sweater that had the three players from Team England's name on it in order to stand up for the racism that they faced off against. Yeah. And I didn't realize this. His his wife, was it Olivia Wilde? 
She ended yeah, up, she's now with like a young guy. She yeah, they gassed him for Harry fucking Styles. What the oh, fuck is that shit? Come on, man. I'm a fan. I hope he That's doesn't listen. Tough, man. Yeah, this but you know what? Man. That's today because he could do. He can grab whoever oh, he wants. Right. But still, I that's tough. There's, there's actually a great article on GQ. I'm, I don't have a subscription, but I read it online. Great. He he's the cover boy this month, or like this week, however often it comes out. And he gives a great interview, and 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 everybody who talks about him says he's almost like Ted Lasso. He's just a real positive guy, and like has very positive energy, and just tries to really help people. So it's almost like there's a, a semi auto autobiographical nature to to the role that he plays. So, all right, my dad told me too. Ted Lasso, one of the best shows he's ever watched, and you still haven't finished it. it, right? Now, all right, when you said you're a fan, do you mean you're a fan of not only him but also Harry Styles? No, I no, I'm not talking about Harry Styles. I'm a fan oh. of I've been a fan of Sadakis ever since he, he came to SNL, loved all his movies. And then when he did Ted Ted Lasso, that's been the pinnacle. Harry Styles, I have no beef with him. Uh, I don't I've never listened to his band, whatever it was called back in the day. I know he left. He's an actor, whatever. I have no difference on uh, no opinion one way or the other. He was in that what was the war movie a couple of years ago? Um fuck, Christopher Nolan one where they they filmed the three different 1917. No, that was the um that was the other one. Sam Mendes one. This it was the one with um they filmed it in three different sequences. Dunkirk. 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 Thank I've you. never seen it. I heard it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's a great it's movie. It's a rush. And he has a small role in that. But yeah, I, I don't I don't listen to that music. I get no problem with it. I'm not dissing it, but yeah, I mean, it just yeah, sucks I mean, that. Least, it's just, it's he's young, right? So, like, yeah. Oh, no, so yeah, if yeah. my wife leaves me for, for like a 10 year old, years for a 25-year-old stud, I'll kill them both. But if she leaves <laughs> me for a 40-year-old, go ahead. It's yeah, like, I mean, we talk about a bruise to the ego. And, like, you can think oh. you don't have an ego, but, like, your old lady dumps you for a 22-year-old fucking stud, man. That's going to that's gonna cripple you. But, you know, I don't know. You move on. And, and he seems I to have done that. I guess you got to just go grab a 22-year-old rocking himself. Who knows well, what Ted last I think well, he, Ron Francis is first on my list if he ends up picking a Pilarn. And then <laughs> number two is Harry Styles. And I'll be doing it for you too, R.A., because we like Ted Lasso around here. Yeah, I know. So what? You you still haven't finished it yet, I'm guessing. I still I asked haven't. You. I, I, okay. I, I tried the first episode. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in because I need a show right now. You got to go okay, back I'll start to it. it too. I'll start yeah, it start. too. But I am, I am psyched to hear big. I am psyched to hear Big Dan was a big fan of it because yep. a lot of people have become big fans of it uh, through my recommendation. And, and honestly, like, that's not an ego thing. That's just like I get a joy in sharing things that I like with other people who like them as much as me. And Ted Lasso was probably the epitome of that because I loved it from the get go. And every it seems like every day on Twitter, somebody else new watches it. So yep. but thanks for listening to me there. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is one goofy last goofy topic. Um I get on my Uber or Lyft the other night. I had a, a long ass funeral. I was out drinking all day and took an Uber home. And the guy I didn't say a word. The guy's like, I give you five stars. I'm like, like, who gives a fuck what the driver gives you on Uber or Lyft? It matters. Stars? How? Because what, they then, not pick you up for fucking money. Because if, then if, they won't, they won't they'll because if if you request an Uber, they'll they'll look to see what your rating is and they might say no if you're like got like a low rating. Yeah, if you're like chirping the drivers and you're puking in the back seat, they give you a bad rating, RA. And and yes, they will not pick you up if you have a bad but, rating. At least but some someone's gonna get you like all the ten drivers could pass, but then eventually if someone's gonna be like, Hey, it's fucking forty bucks no, for but, a ten minute. But ride. if you have a low rating and you wanna get a ride quick and then four people say, No, this guy's a four point four, I ain't picking him, all of a sudden you're not able to get over to meet your uh your your connect now saying that i'm interested to know what ra's rating is because you can check what your rating is but you got to dig for it on the oh, uber let's, app let's everyone look okay <clears throat> let's everyone look <laughs> yeah do you know where, like, you know where to find it grinelli I, yeah i, I do see. all right so go to uber yeah yep. uber. go to uber and then when oh, you i get got to, it when you get to uber click on yep. the top left like hamburger thing Ooh. and then you go down to hamburger. settings mine's 4.68 Fucking mine too, Biz. I'm a 4.68. So settings. I've got mine up from Wait, 4. where did you guys find though. it? Because it's not settings. Yeah, it's not settings. No, it's you just, just you just go over you hit the three lines at the top. And then it's yeah. right below here. Oh, <laughs> we called it a hamburger. I'm 4.75. <laughs> oh, and then, and then where? And then where after that? It's and then right it's right beneath your name. name. Oh, oh, 4.78. Oh, oh hey, let's go. <laughs> I must have I must have shared a fucking joint with somebody at some point. Yeah. Uh, but either way, I was like, oh, thanks, buddy. But like, already I told him he was Ted Lasso. The guy's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've literally never given it a second thought. And, no, and it one, matters. It matters. And, oh, one last thing. This is a wicked veteran tip. Like, coming home from Colombia, I had to fly from Cartagena to uh, Panama City, Panama, not Florida. Wit. And 
it was like an hour and 20 minute layover. So what did I, what I did, I was in seat like 32 F way in the back. So I waited for the whole plane to board. So I was the last second to last guy to get on. So I could see all the empty seats there. So I could get a, a seat close to the front to cut it that much closer. Cause dude, when you have seat 32 and you got like yep. a, 40 minute like layover and you got to do a mad dash that's anxiety central so i waited for everyone to get on i ended up in like the sixth row got off the plane i still had to do like a mad dash like oj simpson i don't mean like slashing throats i mean running through the airport i made my flight in about 20 25 minutes but little veteran move next time you have to make a flight i wait, think wait it out and hope just, it's i think you could tell the the flight attendants though too and they'll they'll let you off like first yeah um, it's just a, a double veteran tip. Yeah, no, exactly. I was just like, I, I can't be too careful. I was super paranoid because I needed. Yeah. To I thought on, for so. sure you'd be in first class after that little sneak job. Well, I did it. It's funny. I, I, I asked to upgrade with the woman, but I, a little bit of a language barrier. I was in a foreign country and everything was in Spanish. So I was just kind of like hoping I just got home. You had to give a total COVID test, all these like documents and shit. But it was well worth it, man. I, I had a blast. I highly recommend it going to Columbia. If you can get down there, it, it was a hell of a time. Different cities, different places. I know there are, but uh, I had a blast. And, uh, boys, this episode has been a blast, too. To yeah, it's been a week. long time, too. We're, yeah. We're, yeah. At, we're at three it's and a half great hours. One. It's great yeah. to see you guys. And um, next week, we'll be able to chat about uh, Seattle's actual roster. We will be able to really look into uh, UFA, which will be coming up in a few days after that, along with the draft. And, and I look forward to it. So it's great seeing all you guys again. Once again, thank you to our listeners. We appreciate you so much for staying on and listening after the hockey talk. We enjoy getting into the nonsense. And we love you all. And remember, ego is the enemy. Peace. Yeah. Look out for our, our self-help conferences next after ball hockey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Later. See ya. Have a great week, everyone.